We're back. We're back. This is Net That Hole. Have we been away? <laughs> I don't, don't think so. Um, Mariner here. How are you doing, everybody? Um, just to give you a quick um, date stamp, time stamp on this. It's Saturday morning. I'm six hours into a hangover uh, in Singapore. <laughs> um, sometime around the end of June, I think. Uh, I can't, don't even know what day it is. Saturday. Gabe, you are in Phoenix, Arizona now. I am in Phoenix. It is, let's see, it is 40 degrees Celsius, which is uh, right currently here at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, last week, it was 40 degrees Celsius by 9 a.m. So uh, this week is better. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, it seems like the same temperature I was playing golf yesterday. Anyway, Nima. Married on Sunday. Yeah, Get this is like the Friday. FPL stag. Yeah, FPL stag do, I thought. This is your FPL stag do. Indeed. I, I got my uh, Van Gogh glass with the glass straw. Van Gogh? Van Gogh? Yeah, Van yeah. Gogh. yeah, sure yeah, yeah from, Van Gogh? Yeah, it is Van Gogh, but <laughs> he went crazy, didn't he? He's, he's the one who cut off his ear. Well, that's, that's the sort of thing I do in FPL seasons. I know. I thought I thought you guys would relate. That's why I mentioned the cup. This game is like torture. We call it a hobby, but it's just all painful and all yeah. year long. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Van Gogh used early. to call his painting a hobby, and then he cut his ear off. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Hibbo as well. You're with us, buddy. Start as we mean to go on, and of course we've got him. So I go. Let's just get this right. Hmm. Nima, London. Yeah, so I'm in London, so it's about 11 p.m. now. So it's just the beginning of Friday night. Hmm. We're going to go live with Chris, enjoy the coffee, while the rest of us enjoy some drinks, right? Well, I've got coffee and water, and I'm also trying to keep the cat out of the room, which is basically as usual. It's normal. But I'm always the one who draws the short scrub because the world is round. But believe it or not, everybody, it feels very flat sometimes. Um, yeah, so, and of course, we have Hibbo. Who's in Derry? How are you, mate? I'm good. I'm good. I'm ready, ready to get going for the new season. You know, so um, exciting times. We didn't have much of a break, really, did we? No, no. And I wasn't doing. I wasn't planning on doing any content. And I took one look at the Euros and got and got into my stats again. I'm, I'm, I can't help myself. I, I think you're just you're like an FDR fiend. <laughs> uh, FDR fiend. Yes. yes, that's what I might put in my YouTube title. FDR fiend. Uh, or in the, <laughs> FB, in, uh, the YouTube. I'm at it already. I'm talking to him shit in the Twitter. Yeah, FP, F, FDR fiend. I like it. Who have we got in anyway? We've got Jamie Baker. Good night. Oh, he's already off to bed. Hello, mate. <laughs> Raj, how are you doing, man? Bungle the Gooner. He's changed his name this year from just Bungle to Bungle the Gooner. That must, be in in solidarity. In that must be in solidarity to you, Nima. Yeah, but it's because of Saka showing mm. on the international stage on his first Yeah, but chance. you need to show your hair. You need to show your stripe. Yeah, at the beginning, I'll do it. But I don't know how many people stripe. are. I might do it like, you know, like on OnlyFans where you reach a certain number of people. So when oh, we reach oh, a certain number right. of likes okay. or something. All right. So I'll All right. bring myself so up when, when, like, when we well, reach 15 you, people watching, you can do it. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's, thank- 14, there's 14 likes. I'll take 50 likes and 20 people watching. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll call it out think- early. Don't be thinking we're going to be doing anything else. I mean, I have I have no forfeits to do. I don't have to put my underpants on my head. I can't remember what I said I was going to do it for, but I remember I didn't have to do it. No, no I, think, I think definitely if we get the stream up to 50 likes, I think Nemo should pick his top off. <laughs> top off? I was just going to show my hair. For, for top off, I can tell you how many likes that is. Have you, have you got your fancy dress outfit from your... Um, from oh, it's your... in the car, but I could quickly, swiftly get it. Yeah, <laughs> if we get to 50 likes, you've got to go and put your Pikachu outfit on. That sounds like a plan. Yeah, uh, let's, right, let's that's spread it. the Good word. Boys. This Tweet is the it, plan. Guys. 50 <laughs> likes, Nima's going to go and put his Pikachu on. He's going to go out to his car in the middle of the Wednesday. night in London, put his Pikachu on. He might never come back because he's probably just going to get arrested. <laughs> sounds like it, especially in my area. Right. Do you know what? We're, as, as usual, we're five minutes in, we're just talking complete crap. But I think that's what people. Um, <laughs> I think that people are quite used to that with us, aren't they? But anyway, so who else we've got? We've got uh, Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? Um, yeah, I think 
that's just a few people We've got 12 in which isn't bad considering it's the middle of the night here um, a lot of the indian chaps said oh i'll try my best to get up at three o'clock in the morning and watch you chris i said i said don't worry about it i said just just watch the recording yeah. <laughs> i don't even get up in the middle of the night and watch england anymore <laughs> and don't get me started on that it's like watching bloody paint dry Anyway, I know, right. I know, I know, I know, but you're playing Germany, and I think you have a chance. Yeah. How long? How long? How old are you? Thirty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. I love how you <laughs> had to think about that, Hippo. <laughs> I, <had to> <laughs> I saw you counting. We 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 we've spoke about this before. So like, whenever I got over a certain age in life, I I like don't know my own age anymore. Mm. So like, if anybody That's says what, what 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 age are you, I just be like. 31, 32, uh, 37, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Do you know what? You do go through a stage like that. And I'll tell you what the next trick is. I don't know if anybody can follow follow me on this one. Get to 40. When you get to 40, start counting backwards and see how long it is before someone tells you you're a lying git. You're no longer 36. You're actually 44. I think I got to 46. I was still telling people I was 34 before someone said, you're not 34, Chris. You're a liar. <laughs> got called out. Anyway, right, guys, let's get into this a little bit. I mean, first things first, look at these graphics. We have a graphic designer in our, in our midst. Well, sort of. Well, it's Hibbo. Uh, th 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 these are quite good, Hibbo. You're going to be responsible for all our thumbnails this year, right? That's that's basically the plan. So I don't really have any graphic design background, but I've been messing around with graphics in the off-season. So I think it looks well. Like it, it's It's... It incorporates the doodle images that that, that the FPL doodles did for us, you know, so and about a bit of kind of very bright neon green as well, which I think hopefully it, it, it grabs people's attention when they go on the YouTube, you know. So. Yeah, I think that's what most people go for that neon green, don't they, on YouTube these days? But anyway, so we're not copying anybody, honest. But <laughs> it's the colours of FPL, right? Green and purple. Yeah. That's what I've realised. Yeah. So, no, so there we go. So we've got Nima, do, uh, sorry, Nima, we've got Hibbo doing this sort of stuff now. And of course, as we've already done a bit of an introduction into um, about us a little bit about where we about where we sit. But just to say, we are truly global, right, lads? Um, I'm English. I sit in Singapore. Gabe hails from Venezuela and lives in America. Nima hails from Iran and lives in the UK, England, shall we say. <laughs> Indeed, yeah, England, I know for now, but I, I don't think well yeah. for them next Tuesday. I'm no, by Tuesday, it'll be back to the... We could, we could, by Tuesday, it'll change back again. That's why I have my <laughs> Arsenal... If you even look at my uh, graphic on the FPL Doodles artwork, I have the Arsenal shirt on, so I'm here for the two things, transfer trends and Arsenal. That's yeah. the only two things I can be honest about. Otherwise, and, I'm competing with Hibbo everyone. Is, yeah. And Hippo's in Ireland. So there we go. But hails from Ireland, lives in Ireland, and... Is a Celtic fan. And is a Celtic fan, yes. For my sons. For my sons. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, what we're going to do tonight, this morning, tonight, whatever it is, wherever you're listening, we're going to literally talk a little bit about ourselves. You've already got a bit of that. We're going to look at our histories uh, on FPL the type of player we are, um, you can probably feel free to comment as much as you want in the comments. Guys, if you see some uh, nugget of golden nugget in the comment, just fire straight in because I really want this to be interactive. You know, when we start talking about last season, tell us what was good, what was bad. You know, we've all got our pantomime villains. I've got Gareth Bale in his golf club somewhere <laughs> and Rob Holden, among other players who we know may come up in chat. But as much as anything, we're going to talk about what style of play we are as well. And if there are lessons learned, if there is anything which we can learn, apart from not listening to Gabe about Gareth Bale, <laughs> um, then let's have them. So there's a question here. Are we showing our first drafts? Well, first of all, Hassan, I've done a draft. Gabe, have you done a draft? I've done a couple of drafts, but... I a draft this time of year is just like it's a, it's like something you do when with with the the, the morning duties if, if if you know what I mean. With the you morning sit, sit in the bathroom, you do a little draft, and then you're kind of done for the day. It's yeah, 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 draft really serious. You're saying you do your drafts on the toilet. 
I do. Just once, <laughs> and then that's it. <laughs> It's not basically. It's nothing that I take too seriously I, I this time then, of year. So when we, so when we get, when we get to your, when we get to your history, there's no wonder that your rankings are so shit. It's, <laughs> I, I am nothing if not consistent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite regular, as you might say. I, 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 I actually haven't done a, I haven't done a draft like I went down and I auto selected a team so. I don't really know if you boys are under this, but like I'm under kind of trying to get like a low team ID. Yeah. You know, it's it's it's, it's a funny you know, it's a funny out. it's a funny a stupid thing in the FPL world where it's like, oh, I want to get the lowest ID possible. So I auto selected a team, I submitted it, and see since then I haven't looked at my team yet, you know. So um where I stand with making a draft is at the minute, I don't think there's any point in me making a draft because there's too long until the season starts. It's and, too long. There's so much that can happen. But but it's 49 days. <laughs> Just the Euros have to finish days. first, let alone transfers. There's been really no <laughs> transfer activity. Yeah, none but, until the Euros finishes, but they want to start early. Although Sancho looks as if he's gonna get done. Mm. Yeah, it looks Grealish, like Grealish looks as if he's gonna get done. There's a lot of noise about Grealish, so mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's going to change a lot, isn't it? I mean, look, I've done a cup, I've done, I've got a draft, and I, it took me. I, I posted on Twitter that it took me two minutes. We're going to come on to the game in general later on about probably some of the. I, I think we can call criticism, lads, actually, uh, about some of the pricing and this, that, and the others. But we'll save that for later on. Get a, yeah, hippo's hippo's going to get oiled, and then we're going to let the we're going to let the attack dog loose. I'm basically. Bit. I'm I'm basically Yarmolenko, right? So like if can I see this, like just come in and sponsor me. Just just come and sponsor me. <laughs> Lost what Christian Cristiano run out though. Uh, did you see the Yarmolenko video? He was saying, ah, oh, just everybody sponsor me. It was so funny. <laughs> oh dear. And yeah, so we've got some drafts, but I might put my draft up at the end just to, to show you. I've got it on the uh, I can put I could put it on the screen if I need to, if uh, if you want to see it. So, yeah, so we've got a few more people on. We've got Tony on. We've got uh, Grady. Um, Hassan's here, as I said. Uh, we've got Sal has not been allowed to go to the Olympics, mm. totally said. Yeah, we've heard that, I think. Mm-hmm. So, but anyway, yeah. let's let's crack on. So we're going to start with Hibbo for a change. We're going to do it in different order. So what we've got, lads, is we've got a few questions, which I'm going to put to you, and then someone's going to have to put them to me, if you can remember what they are. Because I don't think I'll give you the questions. Yeah, or I, I, have, I have oh, that's the questions. Cool. Hibble, Hibble has them written down. That, that's in perfect. a notebook. So anyway, here, here is the legend. Here is the legend that is Hibbo with, with well, actually, the, the graphic only shows half a brain. Well, I don't know if that's true, but... Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it depends how frequently I've been drinking. And, and the... And the, and the team colours are as, probably as close to Celtic as you can get, although it doesn't look a bit like Chelsea's, but a, one of Chelsea's second mm. kits at some stage. See, right, as far as team, team kits go in FPL, I'm a complete nerd. Like, see whenever I go, Gabriel, Gabriel, you don't have a rig? No. Because I went in and I looked at your team and your rig's completely white, and see to me, that's like sacrilege in FPL. you got to make a rig. You, ha- really? you have to Oh, you have to make a rig. So, like, my inspiration for the rig is always kind of, well, it's loosely based on the Bumblebee kit, the Celtic. But, no, we'll, we'll just look, say, at my history there. So, what I'm going to say is, if you look at my last three seasons, we're going to caveat them. My uh, oldest daughter is three and a half. So, that's why in my last three seasons, I've been completely in absolute shape. Um, <laughs> that's, 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 that's boding well wow. for me, then, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I, Marner... Hey, welcome. Wow, to yeah, you know what? The six before that are all top 25. We're, we're, tw- we're 15 minutes in, and Hibbo's throwing his daughter under the bus. This is no, 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 you wouldn't you wouldn't believe the amount of full 90 minute matches I would have watched. Like I would have watched basically every Premier League match going. And we're maybe going to touch on that down the line where we talk about say lessons learned. And for me, that's something I want to get back into a bit more, which is watching as many full games as I possibly can. Um, but yeah, I've been playing the game since 2006. 
Although at that stage, I wasn't really like an engaged and foreign player. So 2012, 2013 was really my first proper season where I got on the, I became a big poster in the message board for FAF Scout. So from there, you can see, well, I had the 16K, I had 5K, 13K, 22. And then my best rank was the 4,443. Um, not a bad history, but then the last few years haven't been great, you know. Well, we'll get that right this year. As I said, you know, now you've blamed your daughter. There's no coming <laughs> back now. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to. No, you're, gonna no. have to you're in the. You're, you're plumbing the depths. We're plumbing no. the depths of FPL content here, boys and girls. <laughs> if I was blaming his daughter for his rank, <laughs> and it's a pretty good rank the six years before. That, no, yeah, it's an impressive rest, record. It has to be said, though. It's like, <laughs> you know, just a quick question here: If yes. can you actually think back? The point, you know, that nosebleed moment when you've been so high in the middle of the season. Do you know your highest intra-season rank? See that year where I came 4,443. At one point, I was top 500. So pretty good that year, like, you know, but um, no, like... Like the questions that you've asked me is like, what kind of, what type of player would you consider yourself? Aggressive, passive, patient, I'm, I'm patient. See, in my best years, I was such an aggressive player, and I watched. I was trying to, I'm trying to get to that point where I watched a lot of matches, and I was re really engaged in watching ninety minutes of football all the time. I could sit down, watch match of the day, or watch a full match. I could see one piece of skill in the game from a player, or maybe a player who's out of position or like a wing back who's getting forward a lot and I could just see a wee glimpse and go I need to get that guy now I feel like my style has changed a bit over the years where from being aggressive I've kind of turned to being a bit passive and what I want to do this year which is different to previous years is I want to kind of try and shut out the noise a bit and I want to kind of try and you posted this the other day game about do you know who you are like you made this it was quite a deep tweet I thought on Twitter like how do you know who you are and I kind of feel as if over the years I've kind of lost who I am in terms of a player in FPL. And I want to get back to that. I want to get back to being kind of hyper-aggressive. I was very hot-heavy in those years. Like, I can't turn around and say I was one of those players that says, oh, I'm not going to take minus four. In those years, I was very aggressive and very hot-heavy. Um, so, like, the, the answer to your next question, had to roll. I'm more hot than roll. If I roll the, tr roll the transfer, is kind of, like, against my religion. Um Strategy, early wildcard TV, I like the ball team value early in the season. So we all know, like I know Nemeth really, that he's the guru here as far as like price trends go. But when the season starts, I like to be early in my transfers. I try and get as many good players in as possible and get that TV built up early doors. Um, best moment of last season was my game week 35 bench boost. Now, it was ridiculous that I helped my bench boost the game week 35. But in the week, I ended up scoring 172 points on a minus 12, mind you. But my game week rank was something like 800. Well, without hits, it was like 885. It was my high point of the season. And my worst moment of the season was really my starting team and my first nine weeks. I started the team, I started the season with Havers and Werner. Um, and then you're looking around at, say, say Michael Kuhn had won it. And other people had started well, and they had, say, Harry Kane, Son. We know those boys came out of the blocks playing. And if I want to talk about, say, lessons learned, well, for me, a lesson that I've learned is don't maybe go too far away from the template when you're starting the season. Don't try and be too clever. In, term of ha in terms of Havertz and Werner, we didn't really know what we were going to get out of Havertz and Werner, and I really bought onto the hype, and I bought onto Werner's Oh, he's got this XG from the Bundesliga. And, like, I thought he was going to have the ground running. It looked as if on paper Chelsea had a really good side. It didn't turn out to be the way. They went to Tuchel. Things improved, obviously, since Lampard, you know. But it was it, it, it's about a debate that the boys in Nirvana have been having recently. It was all, once a player reaches a certain level of skill in the game, is there really any more that you have to learn? And it was touched on on the week on Twitter. I'm not going to. I'm not going to name who posted it on Twitter during the week, but people I think are kind of in this mindset that once you become, say, a player that of a certain level of skill and you've been playing for so many years that you don't really have anything to learn. I came 175k last year. If I turned around since I didn't have anything to learn from last season, a I wouldn't be being true to myself. 
you know, I think you have to be self-analytical and turn around. And for me, I messed up my wild cards. My starting team wasn't great. At different points in the season, I played all right. But if I took another lesson out of it, it would be that don't kind of play your wild card thinking about, oh, these players are going to get away from me and transfer value and I'm going to get priced out of certain moves. My team wasn't bad. If I had maybe took a couple of hats, I probably could have preserved my early wild card. So that's a, a lesson for me, but I think it's a bit of advice for people out there. It's as well with, with my second wild card that I played in game week 26. I maybe could have took a minus 12 and that we can preserve my wild card to game week 31, which would have been a better time to play it. So look, mm. I, he, he's no me. I like to talk, but I'll let one of you talk now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're still going to stay with you, actually. But uh, there's a great question that's coming, but I think we'll save that for the end, guys. So just yeah. uh, keep that one for the end. There's a fantastic question coming from Prasun, so we'll we'll come back to that. But Hippo, um, obviously, just to let people know, obviously, part of what we're talking about today is about the content and what we're doing. We've already mentioned the fact that we're global, uh, and to let people know, we have now agreed that the Tuesday Compass show, which we called it last year, is actually going to be done in the UK time zone. And that's going to be done with Hibbo and with Nima, and possibly Gabe, <laughs> and, and occasionally perhaps the poor devil sat in Singapore, but the time zones are going to destroy me if, they, if, if, if I'm ever on at that time in the morning. But but one part of what we're going to do in the, in the Compass show, or the early show of the week, is we're going to talk about breaking the template, Hibbo, and this is your... This is your beast, right? This is Hibbo's hammer. So this... tell us about tell us about your content, and the, obviously you've got tons of experience, and and also, you know, a real wit, and you know, a, 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 can I say lovable rogue about you? But I think you can say, you can say that. yeah, <laughs> a lovable rogue. I think that's the way I describe you. Um, but obviously, this part of that lovable rogue is breaking the template, right? So tell us okay. about this. I wrote I wrote an article or a thread, sorry, which became an article, I suppose, in Fantasy Football Hub early, uh, well, kind of at the midpoint of last season, about ownership. And it was really from that article that I think Gabriel got in touch with me. They asked me they would appear as a guest on Net That Hall. So when I came on to Net That Hall, I started talking about ownership, but I started talking about well, how we think about ownership and stuff like that. And really that was that was that was breaking a template and it's and it's and kind of formative that was a conception for it like you know it was how can we use ownership to make decisions within the game so and this slide that you can see on screen at the minute so this was this was like a snapshot of say double game week 27 where i focused on say gundigan now at that stage gundigan's form was red hot um we could see he had 91 percent ownership in the top 10k and that week, I said it was Prasun. He, he helped me with a EO forecast that week so that we forecast that um, Gundogan will come on with effective ownership of around 140%. I think it was closer to 150 by the time the season went live. So as we can see from the graphic, for the stats leading up to that, so from game week 30, 13 to game week 26, for players from all positions, like Gundogan ranked first for big chances with 12, and he, he also ranked first for goals with 11. So... With that in mind, you're kind of looking at that thinking, well, how wise is it to back against Gundogan in a double game week? Because we look at all these data from, from that from that fairly large period and thinking, surely it's a bit crazy. I kind of try and formulate an argument against, and the argument against was Gundogan, Gundogan was getting these big chances, but he was converting them all. Now, I'm big into kind of conversion and looking at rates of conversion and thinking, 31% for me is it's 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 unsustainable. Like, you know, that's basically you're getting you're scoring nearly a third of every kind of chance that you get. You're turning every a third of every shot you get on the goal. But I, th I went a bit deeper with Gundogan because at that time, Gabriel Jesus had just come back from injury, Aguero had come back from injury. And really, what created an opportunity for me for Gundogan with on the side was the fact that Kevin De Bruyne. He suffered an injury himself, and that, and that pushed Gundogan to the fore, and it basically pushed Gundogan onto the false nine position. So the return of these players, like my analysis that week, was that, well, Gundogan's now going to start dropping deeper, and he's maybe going to be less involved in kind of these lit runs to the box that's going to get him under the big chance position. 
the talk about KDB coming back was going to impact as about the, the or, or it was going to it, it wasn't going to have penalties. Well, the, the general thinking was it wasn't going to have penalties, and that turned out to be the case. So in that week itself, I recommended KDB. Now in the double week, Gundogan scored ten points. KDB actually scored sixteen points. So I think in terms of the article, it was a one that week. But that's that's basically the concept of breaking the template. It's that. We might look at, say, a high EO player and say, well, can we oppose them in any given week? Should we go against? What's the pros? What's the cons? And we can also look at other things. Like if we look at last season, I think from game week 10, Manchester City had a great run of fixtures. Um, their defenders were so keenly priced. Like you're talking about John Stones. I think I bought John Stones at like 4.8 million. But early in the season, the cumulative ownership, really, of Man City defenders was quite low. And I think players that kind of got ahead of the crowd, they doubled up very, they doubled up very early. So they went on with maybe 200% of Man City defence compared to maybe the field had maybe, say, a 30% cumulative or something like that, you know, just in a rough ballpark kind of figure. Another example was later in the season, which was Chelsea. And I think the community... In a certain respect, they slept in Chelsea defence. I know we discussed it in the, the show. There was reasons for that and the fact that we had so many blank game weeks and so many double game weeks that everybody was kind of zigzagging from blank to double and blank to double. And at the time, I think Chelsea maybe blanked and stuff like that and people were kind of going, right, well, I have to focus on these blanks and I have to focus on these doubles first. But Chelsea went on an insane run of clean sheets and stuff like that, where like a double up in defence, if you had a looked at the cumulative, cumulative ownership of like Chelsea defence, like a double at a certain points would have done you really well. So mm. uh, it's not just a case of looking at a single player every week. Some weeks we'll be looking at defence or some weeks I'll be looking at defence as well. Cool. Cool. Fantastic. I mean, I'll just think about Chelsea. I, I recall looking at the double game week. I think was it game week 26? I think Chelsea play, plus Chelsea had two really tough fixtures on paper. I think Gabe, did you bring Rudiger in that week? Yeah, that, that's I brought Rudiger in slightly yeah. be, before then. I think. Um, yeah. And, and and I and I went in early on uh, on the City defenders. I had I brought Cancelo and Stones in on my wild card in game week twelve. And so to, 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 to Hibbo's point. Um, yeah, but that, that's why I, I think I, I, I valued, you know, when, when I initially reached out to you, Hibbo, I was I was so impressed because you were getting into the kind of the, the psychology of, of the trends. And then, but beyond that, um, where, where when the current goes one way, there's an opportunity that opens up somewhere else, uh, right? Just just like on, on the, when you're playing a match, right? You know, when the, when the movement is one way, then there's space on another side. And I think that's what this is about. It's finding the space is opened up by the kind of currents um, of ownership. I think I think they kind of pull back where you're where we're talking about, say, my better seasons and stuff like that. And I had a bit of a mantra and my better seasons. You can't do really well in the game by doing the exact same thing as everybody else. That's and that, that like that's something I still kind of love by. And it's like if, if I have had a feeling in the last three years, it's that I've maybe had content overload where you kind of get stuck in a rut and like the template and like it doesn't necessarily have to be on twitter but it can be on whichever message board you're on and you can just kind of go along with a tide and kind of do the same thing as everybody else whereas like the guy that won it he didn't do the same thing as everybody else like he mm -hmm. he he was first to the party probably in every transfer. Like, like I looked at Michael Kunstein at Bamford in game week one when probably not everybody, you know, things like that. And, you know, I, I read a piece of analysis during the season where they were talking about Michael Kuhn and like people were saying, oh, he got where he got, he got where he was because he had a really template team. To me, nonsense. He was ahead of the template. Right. Like he was ahead. Of, like he, he couldn't get the number one by being template. He had to be the template before the template was the template. So, and I, I think that's something that's a bit misunderstood in terms of the game, where like people will go, "Oh, but he, he had a template team." You go, "I will like Bamford's template now," but Bamford, Bamford wasn't template in game week one. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so cool, fantastic, right? Um, God, you talk, don't you? <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I was... <laughs> How long do we each get? A 15 minute segment? Yeah, well, it's all right. Yeah, don't worry about no, it. No not more. anymore, anymore. Not anymore. No, don't worry. <laughs> 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 
my season was shit anyway. So it wasn't. It was very good, but then it went very bad. So you, I you, could, have you, doing great. you, come, you could have a laugh when you come round to me. Anyway, <laughs> we're gonna have. I'm gonna have a glass. Of, I'm gonna have a sip of water. We're gonna have. A, we're gonna have a uh, twenty second break, and uh, I'm just gonna tell you about uh, our strategic partnership with uh, AllAboutFPL.com. Are you craving more FPL content? Then look no further than allaboutfpl.com. Head over there for weekly articles from some of the top content creators on the planet. So what are you waiting for? Head over to allaboutfpl.com, the website for all your FPL needs. There we go. It's quite good, that, isn't it? Quite professional. <laughs> I'm quite pleased with that. Sorry you likes it. Surrey is coming on. I think we've agreed, Gabe, um, that Surrey is going to be joining us every other week, I think, this year, isn't he? I think that's roughly what we've said. Yeah, that's great news, too. Uh, such, such such an asset, such a such a good FPL mind. That's right. And uh, and uh, and do hit up all about fpl.com because uh, we're linked off the off the uh, off the homepage now as well. Mm -hmm. So not only can you find articles uh, from Gabe and Nima, you're on there as well, aren't you? Yeah, I am. So I'm a co-editor with Surya. So him yeah. and four friends started it a few years ago. And I came on board this year when they were about 5K followers. And since then, they've grown to like 12K. So they've been going in lots of new writers. There's four editors now and about 32 writers in total. Lovely. And it's always going to be free. So that's the key thing. So there's no plans for the site to kind of monetize. No, no. And that's, that's, that's our mantra as well, isn't it? Free. Indeed. We are yeah. not... Free, FPL, not FPL Robin Hoods. <laughs> FPL Robin Hoods. <laughs> Indeed. Hashtag straight from, straight from that straight out the game playbook. <laughs> <laughs> right. To, Nima. Take from a little of everywhere. <laughs> Nima, you've sat there patiently. So now we're gonna let you loose. So uh come on then, mate. Tell us all about you. Look at that. You win you win trophies. Yeah, so I'm a mini league kind of guy originally. That's what got me into FPL. So when I first started, it was a work league in 2012 when I graduated uni. So I didn't really do well. I used to like follow Scout back then, look at the tips they had for the players and try and copy them like Hibbo was saying, like kind of just find the template and go with it. And it, it was all right, but I would take too many hits. Same thing next year, it was even worse. Then one year, a blessing in disguise happened. So... Between 2013 14, and then when I played my third season of FPL, I actually missed the game week one deadline by one minute. And I was in the Lake District with Jazz, my wife to be. And I missed it by one minute. And the team I chose got over 100 points. And it only counted from game week two. So I just quit that year. I didn't play. And it was a blessing because that was the one year where Jazz said to me, like, Oh, I didn't realize you were so into FPL. She was like, At first, it just it was this casual thing. And then, like, Suddenly, next thing I know, you're always on your phone. You're always looking at stats. You're always looking at FPL. So from the third year on, that's when I took it serious. So I went for like top 500K, then 100K. But since about 2016 onwards, I've managed to maintain that around the 100K is my annual goal now. But last year, to conclude really, was like my best season by far. So that year, I guess I'll talk more later in the show about what I did differently. But I came 1,102. And at some point, I thought I could make a triple digit finish. It didn't quite happen. But this year, I still managed top 100K, so it was my second best finish to date. So I'm hoping now in the third year, especially with the content creation, and especially when I come to answer that question later, it did somehow help still. So even though the content creation was difficult, it did help me pick because I made my article centered around what I wanted to know. So the decisions I make as a manager, the type of manager I am when you ask me, that's actually based on the article I write for Fantasy Football Hub, so Transfer Trends. Now, I, I've been using the data from Fantasy Football Fix as well, and I really enjoy seeing like, the comparisons they show between the different players who are being sold and the ones who are being bought as the most popular combination. So we've got some graphics later that I'll show. But the, the reality is that's where I first got started, and then I met Surya, became co-editor at allaboutfpl.com after writing on Fantasy Football Hub to start with. And then I met you guys, right? So I think around Game Week 26, I came on the show last season, that was going to be an interesting moment. I think it was around January, maybe. It was the first double, it was a big double game week, the second one, actually, when they released the game week uh, news after the game week 25 deadline by one minute. So FPL Towers trolled us then. And later, when I talk about my troll of the season and for this season to come, it's still them because 
they released the game too early. And as Hibo was saying, like, there's no point in even having a team right now. Like, a first draft today means nothing. So I'll talk about the players I like, the prices that seem nice, but there's a long way to go. There's so many unknowns. Like, if Ferran Torres becomes a number nine at Man City, you never know, right? If Grealish goes there, there's so many things that could happen. So okay. I'm waiting till the Euros ends, personally. Um, now, next season, I also hope to kind of obviously be doing the show with Hibo, as you mentioned. So every Monday or Tuesday. So whenever a game week ends and we wrap up that week, we want to have a little review of it. But it's quite a nice time to do it, I think, because his breaking the template and my transfer trends, they actually go quite well together because I'm looking at them, mm. kind of what yeah. the masses are doing. And if you want to knee-jerk with them, and sometimes the knee-jerk works out, right? But sometimes it doesn't. Whereas Hibo is looking at how to actually cut through all that noise and make the right choice. And he's trying to break through that template. Whereas I'd say I'm more of a template player when you ask about my style. So I actually like wood roll. Most of the time I wouldn't hit. So I had a look at my uh, game week history and I saw that I've taken a minus 32 in hits this season. So it's not really that many. I think that's about eight hits, is that? Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, yeah. that's fairly conservative. Uh. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but my captain points were weak. So I'd say this finish I have here with like a 60k finish, well, I'm being generous, a 62k finish even, um, it's only had 550 captain points. And I feel like that's where I got let down. So when I look at something like the captaincy metric, and it's been getting 79% all of last season, I think I need to pay way more attention to the algorithms this season so when we have the show after Hibo and I have done it on Tuesday and we have the next live kind of closer to the deadline so maybe Thursday Friday that one is going to be talking more about what's going on next so you've got Gabriel's got two articles I'm sure whenever he comes to his part he will explain about those but I'll set him up from here because they're fantastic articles and I think again the way we all probably met is as content creators so what I was realizing I was talking to a friend and they was saying kind of tell me about your co-host I was like you know what we all actually kind of write a lot of things in a lot of different places and mm. we've all kind of just happened to all meet and it's really nice when you talk about all about FPL earlier and Surya so when you see him obviously coming on the show now every other week so I think we have a global reach we all have like different time zones covered so we've got one show for each side and now that it's in podcast format this season as well so on everything Spotify Apple and Google so whatever you need to find it on and I'll, the only one you can actually leave a review on is Apple so if you do have iTunes or an iPad we would love a review if you enjoy this. As I said, it will always stay free. So get your comments in. Let's get to the 50 likes for Pikachu, but let's think about <laughs> what would happen for 500 likes. Can I, with, I would like to look at the transfer <laughs> trends graphic, please. No, I haven't even asked you your bloody questions yet. You've gone off with your bloody advert. I should have put an advert. I just put the hashtag ad up. No, I went through, I went through it. I muted it on Twitter the other week. <laughs> You don't want to see it yourself on your timeline. <laughs> yeah, exactly. can, I, can I can I give a bit of a shout out here, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna keep quiet. We have a, <laughs> we, we have a fellow in the chat, uh, John Chappelle, and John came 14th in FPL last year. So shout out oh, to John. Well, there we go. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's Matt, John. John, please do join the Netbat Hall Mini League. You'll find the code in the in my Twitter. Um, we'd love you to. We'd love you to come in because my son messaged me the other day. He says, "Oh, I've just checked someone's history, and they were they were seven hundredth in the world last year." No, I said, John, right. John I said, was fourteen. So get John. Yeah, on. so that's what we need now. That'll really annoy my son. So you know, please, please, please do join us, John. It's a pleasure to have you here, and well done on the season, mm -hmm. Nima. Very quickly, yes. Type of player: aggressive, passive, patient, impatient, patient. Prone yeah, to, yeah. Prone no to transfer. rate transfers. No, no, th th there is some, but I've learned from those. So I'll tell you about it. Like some of the seasons past, like I'll bring in Ibrahimovic for a double game week and then he'll get injured in the Champions League, ACL <laughs> done, minus four straight out. Like I've had so many moments like that throughout my years as a FPL player. And I think that's probably what got me into writing content because even though I write about a lot of articles, I think my main thing is I do prefer talking about what we're doing because the memories I have, the moments, the games I've watched, like for me, FPL has always been about just enjoying the game. So when he was talking about watching the games and how I'm seeing certain players do certain things, that really inspired him to bring them in. That's why I kind of like Gabriel's articles as well, because there's a lot of like video stills and it's a lot of analysis. So I showed like my non-FPL friends and they were like, wow, like this is really high level stuff. And it's, is beyond FPL. So it's really good journalism, sports journalism, I would say. So if you're looking at the Bleacher Report, their style book, like he's got that down to a T. 
He's a fantastic writer, and I'm sure one day someone like The Athletic will be lucky to have him. <laughs> God, it's it's still blab, blah, blah. Are you, are you on a retainer or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. Like, you know, see, see look, when I, Gabriel, Gabriel stuff, Gabriel stuff, he's like, he's like an analyst, an analyst, really, like, you know, in terms of like a football analyst, like, like that, that are getting paid by clubs. So I, I, th- I honestly think we're like spoiled having Gabe as part of the show. Like, you know, I, I'm still waiting for those checks to arrive, by the way. <laughs> No, we love you, Gabe. From, from the clubs. We're going to yeah, come on to you in a bit if these two ever keep quiet. We'll get to you. You will make it. <laughs> to be fair, I think I'm doing well because I've only gone for about 10 minutes and I know no, that that's very true. we both did go for longer than that. But, but I, I, I do have to say, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to all of this and I have a much shorter history than, than everybody else. So it, for me, me it's, 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 it's interesting to see more experienced players and what their experience with the game has been. So... Just I'm, I'm comparing it to myself, and I, I don't. For me, I don't get lost in the in the noise. I make more noise, I think, than I listen to, or something like that. So, um, so well, I don't I, really <laughs> lose myself in the game. But I if I played it, <laughs> if I played it long enough, I think maybe that 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 would happen. So the, these are like things that that I'm looking at, and I think, well, I might I might encounter similar challenges down the road after I've played for you know six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. Um, so. I, yeah, I find it really interesting, the, their journey. Yeah. Nima, very, very quickly, just to run through these set questions then, because I like to do this, because, again, it's for people to think for themselves as well. So he we said hit or roll. So you're more of a roller than a hitter, right? 100%, yeah. Only, tw- yeah. only minus 32 in hits last season, so yeah. eight hits. Uh, you're a team value, man. I think we've come across that already. It was bad last season, but I, I tried. So I will take hits. So that's what's really interesting. So compared to the fact that I'm hit averse, the hits I do take of those eight, I found like four or five of them were in the first few weeks. And it was when I was like in game week two, I took in Bruno. It was after he didn't play the first blank game week and I bought him in for a hit instantly. Then I did it with DCL. So every week I made sure I was taking hits for the players that I thought would rise 0.3 million a week. So that's what I mean. So the article I write, like it all... It's me kind of writing for what I will then use to determine my FPL choices. And I've realized that about a lot of writers, so like Chris Tan as well, and his captaincy article, he writes that to help him pick his own teams. So it's really interesting. Yeah, so he does his fan team thing, but I think that captaincy article is fantastic, like similar to Gabe's level in terms of like being an analyst. So it's a really good article. But I know it's only available to FFH members and like obviously like it's not accessible the whole way through but a lot of it is for free so it's still worth checking out if you don't have a membership robin hood mm. well what i'm what i'm gonna say what i'm gonna say is chris tan's article is my favorite article in the whole exactly well without a doubt like it, it's no. just it's so I in-depth have... like it's to be fair i subscribe to hub as well so i do read those i think we all do um i mean look um uh, nima scouting methods are you a numbers man? Are you a, um, you know? I compare players. I man so, or are you something yeah. in between? No, so I compare players. So I use the eye test. And if I'm comparing players, sometimes I let the eye test overwrite the data. So I always say in life, outside of FPL2, this has been my, my kind of way of living, is if the qualitative data doesn't seem to be quite matching with the quantitative data, that means at least it needs a second look. So you need to go and re-watch the replay, see what the player does, see how confident they look. So like a prime example right now is in the Euros, seeing France, like they look kind of flat, but the one player that looks like he's really informed is Benzema. And he's just like there and he's scoring and you think he's on a hot streak. So like for me, if we're talking about like Euros fantasy, like I thought I had Mbappe in all my first drafts for tomorrow, but then I changed it to Benzema because I was like, it's a few million cheaper. I can strengthen the rest of the team. He's, just, he's got penalties as well. So for why not? And that's what I mean, a player in form. So I look for that. And the problem is, last year, I said Gundogan. I was talking about him from like game week 11 or 12. So many people debated against me. I gave them reasons why he was great. And I never bought him in for a while myself. So although I had him, I had him more when he was about 140% EO, like Hibbo was talking about in his breaking the template. So I never got to ride the highs of him. But some of my best memories of last season still is when you write the article and you nail the picks. Yeah. So even if you don't bring them into your yeah. own team, I'm just glad to be able to help the listeners, the readers, the mm-hmm. audience. I, I, I'll write the articles and sometimes I can't prioritize that transfer in my own team because it's more broken, right? There's so many fires to put out. And mm-hmm. so they get to reap the benefits and 
I get the expensive player that always fails. So my <laughs> worst moments last season were I brought in people like me instead of Lauten. I brought in Gundogan um, too late, as I said. I didn't bring in Lingard. I never had Martinez once. Like, there was a lot of sins. I had triple leads on a bench boost, six points in the double game week the first time around <laughs> when the game got cancelled. Um, um, but the funny thing is, those weeks were the weeks that I did my best as well. So even though they hurt, my wild card week in game week 16, that took me up from 380k to 250k. And before that, the week before, I was uh, 450k. But I'd been coming back from 1.4 million in total. So I came back to 60K. I really wanted top 10K and it never really felt possible, I would say. So I was so far behind. And that's the thing I want to do differently next season is I want to start stronger. So I think, again, similar to Hibbo, like I only took eight hits. I might take more hits and I want to play like players like Jossie, FPO, if anyone knows him, and Chris Tan. They both, again, are team value players. So I try to learn a bit from them and they go aggressive. Some of these people have so much budget. Last season, budget wasn't as important. So I guess the final thing I say is I'll counteract the fact that I said I love team value. <laughs> but um, my team value wasn't high enough, but there was so much budget quality players that I didn't really need it. So that's what I'm also now going to accept for next year going forward is my like final point is I'm going to also just sometimes get a player that's cheaper and not spend the maximum in a position. Because every time it went wrong for me last year, I was getting, getting people like Cancelo in a double game week instead of Stones. So again, you just fall way behind. Whatever pick I did, I did Zaha instead of Easy. I did Ward instead of Mitchell. Like all these moments, I think I could have cracked top 10K. And that one, it's like a 50-50, a coin flip. That's what I'll say about FPL. Oh, as a vegetable. Yeah, that would be interesting. The fruit, uh, we'll tell we'll tell you about the fruit later, yeah. <laughs> but see, see, see what you're saying about Easy instead of Zaha. If, if I... The week that I cashed out well in, in the fan team game, if I had a went for Eze instead of Zaha, I, I think I'd have come second. Damn, that's crazy. I, like, I had like 81 and a half points in the, in the fan team game. I know it's different to FPL, but I was like nine points off top slot, and like Eze like, scored so much more than Zaha, and I was like, oh, Christ. <laughs> killed, killed myself here. Eh? Just, just to let people know why I put that thing up about vegetables is because Jamie always tends to come with some very strange questions to us. So he's a good, go. he's, a, he's a good guy, Jamie, isn't he? Like, yeah, yeah. He, he tends to come with some very strange questions which we have to answer on air <laughs> with no thought at all. Um, Nima, we've put the graphic up for fantasy football fix and the the transfer trends. So, uh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> He's described you as a cucumber. It's too long. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I can accept that. That's a good compliment as well at the same time. No, look, I'm, I'm just being... I think I'm still drunk. I don't think I've got a hangover, actually. I think I'm, I'm actually You're still carrying drunk. on where you left off. So I don't know what game week I pulled the graphic for this... Uh, Nima, but the tell us about this transfer trends because I I find this and if I could just say what my perspective is here, this rubber stamps what I'm thinking. In many senses, you know, yeah, for no, example, it is everything that you need to think about that week. It's there is the long part of FPL, so I always think five to six weeks ahead. So whatever player I'm going to buy, I get them with that idea that I want them for at least a long term viably if I can. So. Each week, you've only got one choice to make in my eyes. You make that one transfer or you save. And I normally save, as I was saying, because then I know that when I have two transfers, I can see these trends and I can move money between positions and I can move on waves before they happen. So, like, my season when I came 1,100, like, the way I did that was I just got on Aguero when no one had him. And, like, I captained him both 20-point times and I just flew. Like, I, like, that same game week, I'd gone from something like 40K to 110K. There was one game left. Aguero played and I went straight back up to like 30k and it was just like an instant up from like dropping 100k places down and that that was the season I did my best and I came top 10k and I kept trying to push the top 1k but I couldn't do it and it was because I think back then I wasn't writing this article so it was my formative years for this article like I was really thinking about these transfers but I couldn't verbalize it and then I found Fantasy Football Fix I started reading Hub and those two sites alongside All About FPL with Surya they they just kind of shaped the way I thought and now every article I write is to decide my own transfers. So this article, I'd say the best thing about it is 
it's 10 minute segment each week so it's not as long as this that's the best advert i can give <laughs> so today is the get to know me so when people meet us in game week six game week seven we'll say go back to this episode if you really want to get to know the guys see which manager you are most like because then over the year if you keep watching the show you'll be able to follow the moves of the manager you think you match the most with out of all four of us so i i like that so let's kind of use the transfer trends for 10 minutes a week going forwards next year and I'll, I'll talk about it then but my favorite thing is seeing these lines so the thick lines that are kind of the most transfers happening and these percentages don't really do it justice there's a lot more but i only just wanted to show this as a sneak peek i didn't want to give away any more today mm -hmm. but i think there'll be more to come if you're back on the proper shows but this is a nice little intro with everyone and going forwards i think guys just one thing i will say is breaking the template and transfer trends together i hadn't really thought of it back then it's going to become quite interesting comparing those two because we'll be able to see whether the what the group are thinking in the masses so where the millions of transfers are happening that week versus what people who are like in the very small minority already doing this level of research trying to find the differential to push forward with in the rank so i've seen people with that like 0.4 owned eo players and captain them and there's just crazy stuff you see if that player gets like a double digit haul you're laughing like that's that like, you just need one of those moments like i had with aguero in any season and you can get to like top 10k so for me that's the plan but what i will say is 100k is very good and actually unlike say 10 years ago or more back then there may have been a million players so 100k was like the top one percent now there's like 8 million players there could be 10 million this year so top 10k is great but it's a lot harder now i'd say and there's a lot more luck involved so there's way more information for everyone we're obviously here telling everyone here what we know for free there's so many enthusiasts it's like a great community i would say so that's my final part in gift is i hope to see many of the people here at the kind of the live events in london on the 24th of july and august 13th either one there's a free one and a paid one i hope to see as many of you there as possible you need to be there in your Lincoln Greens with your little Robin Hood hat on. <laughs> Make sure they know it's always you've got, you've free. Got to go. This is it. Have we got these 50 likes yet? No, oh. but the hunt is getting up to 30. <laughs> Pikachu. <laughs> it's going to happen. When, when you have your segment, I'll go get changed. Yeah, that's a good point. We need, well, no, we need to get to 50. Yeah, maybe I'll even bump it to 100 for a bonus. Uh. <laughs> Oh, no, no, we're not. No, we can't even think about what that might be. Double or quits. Yeah, oh, God. No. <laughs> uh, leave it I mean, look, <laughs> this is, I mean, what you've done is, I mean, again, you, you've just gone into, are you drinking? I think you are, aren't you? I think so, talk, yeah. What are you That's talking said, The FPL stag do, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, look, I mean, I, I just, I think I just second what you say about the, 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 no, content, you wrap up my the point, content yeah. early in the week. And I think the idea is, and the, the key here guys is we are not like other fpl youtube channels or pods we are very different we've got four very different managers very different characters hailing from very different parts of the world like you say um associate yourself with one of us follow us at your peril <laughs> but associate with one of us uh, and i think you know we're in niche We've got five, we're over 500 subscribers now. Thank you so much, everybody. You know, we had a bit of a push yesterday to try and get over that number, but we've got there. Um, we've only been going uh, 18 game weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, so let's keep this going. And and yeah, I'm really excited for the um, for the uh, the Compass Show or whatever we want to call it next year. We don't have to call it that. We'll let you guys decide it, you know. Um, but yeah. I'm very excited for that. So anyway, we're going to have a glass of water again. And then, uh, of me personally, I am. I think Hibbo's got his Guinness. I just saw that pop up in the screen. Um, and uh, then we'll go to, to Gabe. So just bear with us a second. Gabe, over to you. So the first thing I want to say about Gabe is, if you can see there, just at about the middle of the screen, Gabe's quite well known for wearing hats. <laughs> and if you look at the bottom corner, he's quite well known for being on the beach, along with his dogs. Although yes. now, no longer beach, now just desert. Desert. It's, yeah, no, the beach is pretty far away these days, but it feels <laughs> like a beach sometimes. If you look at just into the horizon, you can imagine that the ocean is there. And that's what being on the beach is all about. It's a state of mind. 
So, Gabe, I, I met you in uh, Ajit's group, The Road to Global Glory, and so mm -hmm. shout out to them as well. Very, very friendly Telegram group. Um, Ajit is probably one of the nicest people on Twitter. I think he's been voted the nicest person on Twitter. I think, so, yeah. I think yeah. Ajit yeah. was. Yeah. And, and uh, I spoke to Ajit yesterday, and Ajit is going to join us for a show this year. Maybe. So, um, so yeah, so uh, that's where we met, Gabe. Mm -hmm. So please tell us a little bit about your your history. Um, checkered, I thought when I looked at it. Checkered. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's checkered. So well, maybe, maybe because I lived it, it doesn't seem checkered to me. It seems like a like a regular pattern. Um, well, actually, it's very regular. Actually, isn't it? Looking at it again, it's very regular. It's, I mean, I, I, so we have, you know, I, I was introduced to the game in 2012 and I don't think I even finished that season. Might've played half the season and then stopped playing something like that. Um, and yeah. I, I, I really, I remember not understanding the game, like picking players that I liked and I couldn't figure out why those players wouldn't, wouldn't score points. Um, like Gareth Bale. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, look, hang on, hang on. Hey. Let's just get, let's just put this in context. I'm going to give you three players. Gareth Bale, Harvey Barnes. Who else can we think of? Rob Holding. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm seriously, don't, you, you, you are a very, very important part of the show, so I'm not taking the piss out of you too much. <laughs> no, I mean, no. With no the you should. Respect. You, you, you should. No. And, but I, here's, here's how I would, I would uh, respond to that. Is I would ask you, how, how was your experience with Gareth Bale, Mariner? Oh, shit. Right. Yeah, well, there you go. To the, so, to the extent uh, that I've got a prop which looks like Gareth Bale. Where is he? Hang on. <laughs> He's going to get the troll now. Marner, watch your, watch your language, please. Do you know what yeah. I based the 50 likes on? The 500 subscribers? I thought I was like 10%. Ah, 10%. That's not bad. There's, there's Bale. There's Gareth Bale. Why? <laughs> <laughs> he's on the well. He's on the golf course because he's, yeah, he's on, the... on the golf course, Gareth Bale. You should know that by now. I'm glad you can use it in the Euros before you need a new prop for the new FPL season in 50 days. Well, You've got time, well, Mariner. Just do very quickly what I want. And I know Gabe hate. I, I know this is this is right up Gabe's street. But can Alvaro Morata come back to the Premier League, please? <laughs> Jesus. Because I need I need a pantomime villain. Jesus, I haven't got one anymore. He's crap. I know he's crap. That's why I want him. At the moment, I'm I'm centering on Joe Linton. Uh, Morata is from the Iguain school of finishing. Well, I, I don't know. I haven't got a pantomime villain. But someone sent me something about. Was it you who sent me something about Morata yesterday with all these misses? Yeah, yeah. I, that, that <laughs> like misses. <laughs> well, well, I was going to have a show if Morata comes into the Premier League. I was going to have Morata of the week. Well, we still have Timo Werner, so yeah, you'll, Actually, you'll have yeah, be Timo. Timo. He's basically Morata. Yeah, <laughs> Timo Morata. Gabe, come on, tell us all about you. So, so yeah, so, yeah. so I, I quit the season, uh, 2012, 2013. Uh, then I, I played the next few years, few seasons, but I, I never really paid attention. This was just picking the play again, picking players that I like. I've always watched games, so um, you see, you know, ranked in the 100k, 200k, 200k, and then the season 2017, 2018, it was like halfway through the season that was ranked. I don't know, like two or three million, and then I I realized that there there was an overall ranking. That's that's the season that I realized that this existed. <laughs> I had no idea. No that probably clue. must be why. <laughs> and and I went from like two. This was like game week. I don't know, like twenty eight or twenty nine, like two plus million, and I went up to two hundred nineteen k uh, by the end of the season. And and then I was like, oh wow, so there are things that I can you know study and look at, and there's actually a ranking. And then that's when I, I got my best ranking overall, the the 14k there in 2018, 2019. However, I don't consider really consider that a success. Well, I consider it a successful season, obviously an overall rank. But game week one, I was at um, 9,000 uh, under under 10k, like 9,800. So the net was a was a negative. It was a negative net. Um, and, and I, and then I think, you know, the, 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 the COVID season, I don't know, I struggled with, um, I don't even remember to be honest <laughs> by, by that time, 174 K I think I struggled with like rotation and, and games being canceled and stuff like that. 
And, and then this past season, I got 190K. Um, I mean, for me, I, I think that my biggest problem was the captaincy. And, and that's something that I, I, I guess I don't have a good handle on. So I, I will rely on your metric much more this year is a, a, a big lesson there, man. It's under pressure. This metric's under pressure this year. It's going to have to deliver, isn't it? I, a lot of people's eyes on it. A lot of people's eyes on it. I've I not say, changed anything. I've not changed anything. So it, it, hopefully it'll carry on doing its same thing. Well, from but, where I'm um, coming from, it's not under much pressure because <laughs> I only I only got like 560 captaincy points or 529 oh, like um, yeah. captaincy points. So as long as it beats that, it, that that's not much pressure at all because that's so yeah. poor. But I, you know, I look at my seasons uh, last season and, and the one before, uh, right after the 14k, and they were both seasons were characterized by poor captaincies, and yeah. and so what that tells me is my process is good, uh, my process can work, but I need I need help with captaincy or I need to find just find a different way, explore a different lens with that. So. Um, so that's what I'm going to do that this year, I think, but, um, yeah, yeah. So I, I think you, you, you can't look at, or I can't look, I don't look at my own rank and, and think good or bad or successful or not successful. I don't think of it in those binary terms. And, and honestly, when you get rid of the binary of the good and bad, then that's kind of like how I've adopted the, F that is the FPL beach. Well, if it's not either or, then it could be kind of anything else. So, I mean, why fucking bother with it? It's just, nah. just, you know, and enjoy I the mean, process. I mean, as, as a player, Gabe, I mean, I've just got, as I say, I've got the, I've got the, the which, where, which fits you best. Aggressive, passive, patient, impatient, or prone to rage transfers. I would say I'm aggressive and impatient. Um, yeah, I, I think that's I, I'm aggressive because I I'll, I watch I watch the games and like I, I may not get the player right away right after I see a game or anything like that. I will think about it, but I will um, if if I'll, I'll watch the game and then I'll go to my articles um, and I'll talk about the articles in, in just a second. And yeah. in that that'll be like kind of the genesis of of my writing. Players that stand out in watching the game. And but if I if I like what I see and then they it kind of like gets filled after all the lens is still there after the filtering, then I just I just I'm just right in on on, on the player. Uh, what the thing I hate the most like when FPL when I suffer in FPL when when I'm truly not happy is when I go with a player that I dislike, like, like Bale, um, <laughs> and and that player blanks I. So I would much rather, I would much rather the, the experience of I get the player that I like, and the player blanks, and the player I don't like hauls. I don't mind that so much, but when I get a player I don't want to get, and that player blanks, I, I feel terrible about myself. Why do you? Why do you sorry. Sorry. Why do you, sorry why, why, why do you buy them if you don't like them? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. <laughs> no, it's, no, no, it's, it's, a, it's, a, so serious it's, it's a serious question. It's a serious question. Because everybody does it, right? Everybody sometimes you, you'll have a player you, you don't have really to like. Yourself, um, so, yeah. so why do we do that? It's, it, it is to protect ourselves. So when so this past season when I did that, I did that with Kane, right? But I did it with Kane after the the, the first part of the season. So it was like middle of the season where Spurs were having a drop. They were entering into some. They were actually on a high through some some difficult fixtures and then when their fixtures started to change i want to say it was the mid game weeks mid 20s something like that then they started to drop off and i brought in kane and and i was so upset because then he just he just started blanking and his stats weren't that good and his stats at the beginning of the season were they was very much outperforming the stats so that was the bad but at the beginning of the season the reason i bought him then was because at the beginning of the season I went without Kane and Son for the first like ten yeah. game weeks, right. and that Ooh. destroyed me. And Ooh. and the thing is, if you look at the stats, like Son, like there was a point I think like game week nine where Kane had he had like um, six more goals than expected and eight more assists and and so, like his the the expected the XGI delta was like a plus ten for both of them. It was absolutely outrageous. And, and, and I would say, this can't continue to happen. And then, you know, Hasenvogel comes out, 
and presses against them. And I'm like, what the like, <laughs> fuck are you doing? Like, so it's like <laughs> this type of like that, then I, but I got, I got burned. I got burned I remember because that. The, the points were coming in, but I did not like the players. And then, so I was like, okay, I, got, I have to get rid of my own bias. Right. So I started confronting my bias. So I bring the player in. And then they start blanking, and then I, that, that's when I felt worse. I felt worse in that second moment than in the first moment. So I think you've just described your best and worst moments of the season, right? No, I didn't describe my best. Oh, what was your best? Oh no, I know your best. I yeah, know your best. That's obvious. The... It's actually it actually coincides with my worst. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We'll come you on to that early. A, yeah, we'll come on to that in a minute. So your best moment of the season, Gabe. Let me let me lead this in. You Please. you for. You said your captaincy decisions were pretty poor. You got five hundred and fifty points captaincy. Five, I, I, something like that. I think it might have been five twenty nine in the right. Year. You got fifty seven of them in one week. Exactly ten percent. It was a great shoot. <laughs> Good on that. Yeah. Well, that was, that was a great shoot, and you, like you deserve credit for your good decisions when you make them. I agree. The trouble, the trouble captain and Gundogan and the week that he did it was Man City had a double game week and it wasn't exactly the easiest double game week on paper and Gundogan wasn't exactly the easiest person to give the armband to but he was in great form it was a great shout credit where it's due yeah absolutely yeah, thank you. thanks he, he was so my, my thought process there and then this is like in when considering I think um, captaincies like kind of the way I think is I knew KDB was going to be coming back soon and I'll, when, when we get to the article piece, that like the image I selected for for the matchups was the it, I, I think it's the the movement like what happens when I don't know it's the Pogba one but when KDB is in the side he plays in front of Gundogan so this is kind of like the last hurrah for Gundogan for a player just in incredible form um, not and then yeah this is the Bruno Bruno Pogba which I'll explain in a little bit um, but yeah just thinking like I. I, I thought the the Gundawan run was ending. It was a good run. He's in incredible form, and KDB wasn't back just yet. So I so I went for it, and and yeah, I think um, one of the matchups was West Ham, um, and and so it wasn't the, the easiest matchup. Uh, so yeah, I remember it well. I remember it well. I remember being absolutely mortified, and then uh, well, now, well, I'm not going to steal my thunder. I'm going to come on to this Sterling moment in a few minutes. Uh, I, I, I'm still I've still not forgiven him. <laughs> Even to this day, I've not forgiven him for it. Um, Gabe, um, lessons learned. I think you you said trying to get over the bias. I think we is that is that one of them. Yeah, I, th I think just um, oftentimes I, I find for me it's when my judgment is clouded. It's usually clouded by some kind of bias. Uh, an example this past season, and I and I do think. Um, I think it was the uh, FPL bangers, right? Um, that that kind of challenged me on Harvey Barnes. I had never rated Harvey Barnes, and and he started the season, I think, and he, he missed his first twelve shots or something like that. He had like twelve shots the first two game weeks and zero on target or something. And I never got over that, but Harvey Barnes did get over that. Uh, and and I think and I think that was like that. That was a game week where I wrote two matchups articles just because. I thought it was so important to confront that bias, and, and honestly, it was like that was around the time when my season started to change and I started to to improve because I was I was ranked at two point uh, like two point two million in game week twen twelve or something like that when when I when I hit my first wild card. So so yes, confronting bias on on a weekly basis I think is important. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting interesting perspective, and again it's. Like for me, you know, I, I don't I, I don't really have any inherent biases in. Like for example, someone mentioned in the chat, why you know, why why don't necessarily like Gareth Bale, but it's the it's the Real Madrid side of things, is it? It's I mean it's that and I just I don't um I so here here's the real reason I, I, I shy away from Gareth Bale. I don't see him as a system player. I think he, he is an incredibly talented footballer that um but when he's on, when he's playing, he plays his own game, and and when that works out, it, it works out because of, of a moment of brilliance or or a well taken kind of a little bit random opportunity, a ball that say Son is sending to Kane and then it bounces to Bale or something like that. He doesn't create anything within the system of a team, in in my experience. 
since he left um since he left spurs for to uh, real madrid so it, that's not something as far as like a player goes you can't really count on that real madrid <laughs> vamos <laughs> vamos vamos so um that and that that's why i don't like bail I, I feel like bail is is not a player you can trust it's just not not a player you can trust and i think that proved to be true if you held him like like Hibba was saying that there there was a way to succeed with bail but that way is fraught with variance and it, i i don't think it makes uh for me for a good fpl experience well, I think like if you're talking about like trying to like the formative point of creating your side for game week one, and like you're seeing a lot of advice on Twitter at the minute, and I think a key point is picking players that are basically more or less 90 minute nailed and mm-hmm. guys like Bale aren't really going to figure in that, like you know, so you're going to have enough issues that are going to crop up in game week two and game week three <laughs> that you don't really need to be buying Andy boys that are maybe going to miss out in game week two, like you know, so. yeah. Super. Right, Gabe, very quickly on the so describe this. This is this is your bag, right? So you'll be joining me on Thursday night off where probably Thursday or probably I would say what 36 to 48 hours before deadline. We normally go. Yeah. We normally go out with this. Uh obviously yeah. I'll come on to what I do um in a bit. But uh you're very much associated with you're the matchup king, right? You are the lens, you put your lens on players on matchups you know attack against defense perhaps quite often mm-hmm. you know who's somebody going to play against who's who's somebody going to come again or come up against yeah um, yeah yeah exactly not, individual matchups on football the moments perhaps <laughs> right unbelievable so individual matchups on the field and also uh matchups from a a more systemic tactical point of view as well uh but to, just to mention so this this upcoming season there is a little bit of a change in in my content that that i want to make everyone aware of because it can get a little bit complicated um so my the fpl matchups which uh surya posts on allaboutfpl.com they will continue to be on allaboutfpl.com with the exception of my preseason matchups which um those will be on um fantasy football hub the reason for that is uh i'm putting the reason i'm putting those on fantasy football hub is because they've given me a link and if you guys register using that link i might make a little bit of money um and that's really it hashtag ad so um that that's what (laughs) and 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 the reason it's specifically on on hub is because i mean i've been introduced to kind of like the 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 people that just the the creators on hub the content creators the people that run hub and, and i have to say i just uh they're, they're just such a it's such a wealth of knowledge and they're so professional uh that it, it's they really are a pleasure to work with so i'm happy i'm happy to put that 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 preseason article on hub and direct people to uh to a tool that i use quite a lot now these the the mat the in-season matchups articles will all go on all about fpl.com and obviously i use fantasy football scout um heat maps for for these articles and and that that will continue to happen so just to explain where where the uh, matchups articles come from a little bit here um it, it basically comes from like i mentioned earlier I'm, I'm watching the game and there are certain um either like tactical situations that stand out and players specific players involved in those tactical situations on um, this this is one i did when everybody was wondering why why bruno or was questioning whether bruno fernandez was uh uh equally effective with pogba on the field um and i went into their their what happens to bruno's positioning um so on the left it's um it's the game weeks without pop without pogba and you see how bruno kind of he he moves it all all across the field like from at the top of the box there and if you look at it I, I have some other more detailed slides but what what happens is from the right side of the field or you know the the left side as, as we're looking at it they're attacking down right so from bruno's right side he tends to create more from that side because he's right-footed so he tends to cross the ball in into the box a little more um and then from you see the orange on the on the more on the left side of the of bruno's attack from there he likes to cut inside and he shoots more so from there he, he'll have higher xg and from the other side he'll have a higher xa when you're so this is when like um eye test translates to heat map which translates to stats 
And, and that's where the, you'll see the XA from the right side of the field and the XG from the left side of the field. Um, someday, hopefully, we'll get a sponsorship that, uh, that gives us XG and XA from, from specific areas of the field. Then you'll really see matchups take off, I think. Um, and then uh, in the heat map on the right, we see on the right we see what what Paul Pogba does uh, when when he gets in the field, and and most of his heat map is on the right hand side, a little bit deeper than Bruno. But Bruno can't venture into that side that he creates from where there's high XA, with the purple square there, because that blocks Paul Pogba's passing lanes. So now now this is where like the the eye test goes to the to heat map, which goes to stats, and then it goes back to the tactics of, of the of the coach of the manager. So if Bruno moves into that area where he from where he creates, then he's blocking Pogba's passing lanes. We've seen in the Euro how good Pogba is when there's space in front of him where he can make passes from deep lying positions. And I think that's what uh, Solskjaer wants to wants to have from Pogba. When, when he's in there. So since Bruno can't move to that side where he creates, his XA diminishes and he's less of a uh, of a creative threat on the field when Pogba plays. That's matchups in a nutshell. Lovely. I love it. I absolutely love this. This is, this is right up my street, although completely opposite to what I – to. this is the last thing I look at, actually. And this is where it's so interesting, you know, because you'll come to me in a second. And if people don't know me, I am completely different to Gabe. <laughs> When we're picking teams and things like this, which is very interesting. So, Gabe, tell here's a nice little graphic which I put together for you. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, hey, did you have, did you have a question or? No, I was basically going to say like we're we're diverse and that's yeah you know like you're different to Mariner and I like bring something different to the table and so does Nima. I, th I think that's what's great about the show really when we get going. It's, we look at different things and I think that kind of differentiates us a bit from different pods and different VOD shows and YouTube. Yeah, you know, and, and you were talking earlier about uh, the, the tweet that I posted. I think it was yesterday or something like that. That you know, uh, you, everyone saw my 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 history, and I'm not this elite manager. And and so I, the thing I tweeted though is like to to play FPL, just know thyself, right? And and I feel like on on our sh on our show here, the four of us. Have each have very different identities, and we we each have a very solid grasp of what those identities are, and and it's reflected in our work, which which I, I really appreciate because I you know I guess something it's all part of a part of the puzzle. Um, the reason I selected this this uh, graph here is because um, holding is there. See that? See, there's a, holdings in the picture here. So yeah, I see. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that's why this this had to make it in there. Now these these articles I will be doing uh, for Hub, not on a weekly basis. Uh, I'm not sure what the regularity of the articles will be, but these will be the um, FPL scouting reports. So if you if you search hashtag FPL scouting reports, it will be screen grabs from specific games, and I'll be scouting players. Um, and, and, and I, I, you know, I get into the tactics and, and, uh, and shape and stuff as well. Um, but this is really, there's a lot of like technical scouting here. Um, and the way players are opening up or the way they, the way they take a shot. Um, and, and this is when, uh, when Jota first, um, kind of started, started being a factor here for, for Liverpool and, uh, a play I wrote here, a player in Jota's form attracts attention that, oh, that that opens the field for for Firmino. So, if in in the image here we see the shape of the of the front line of Liverpool's front line, and it, and it's nice that they're all staggered. You see, Firmino is actually the one checking for the ball. He comes in deep, and that by Firmino coming in deep, they don't have to pay attention to to him anymore. So both um, central midfielders, both defensive midfielders, uh, Shaka and who is that? Uh, and Lenny, I believe. Um, Maybe not. Um, they they both step to to Jota. Uh, then that that opens up uh, the, the space inside, the kind of behind the lines, and Firmino's in a ton of space there. Uh, the other thing that that I like here in, in this clip is how Salah is pinched inside too too many times this season. And it was one of the problems with Liverpool, in my opinion, is Salah was staying wide of of that D, and when he stays wide of of, of that D. Trent Alexander Arnold has no room to run into, to, to, to run into there. So what was happening is when Trent Alexander Arnold would uh, would move forward, he and Salah would come quite close together, and that would make it very easy for the opposing defenders to, to defend because they wouldn't have, because they could stay compact and cover and mark both men. Um, so this is one of the examples where where it worked out. So you can find these scouting reports on the um, 
fantasy football hub and they of course will always be free there's no uh, paywall for them or anything and then you can find the fpl matchups which will be on a weekly most of the time um basis on all about all about fpl.com and i will still write write the threads because i, I enjoy the gifts I, I mean look i i genuinely think gabe you are probably one of the hardest working people in fpl <laughs> I, I the amount of research that you do i, I you know Guys, if you you know retweet the hell out of this, Gabe needs to win an award for the most innovative uh, content creator. For me, I, I don't know what we'd do. With, I, I, you know, I don't want to blow smoke out your ass here, but I don't know what we'd do without you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that, that's too kind. Like, you, you you do everything without me. This without no, without. No, our, our no, what I what I, I would say what I would say about Liverpool this year, and I think it's kind of discussion that we're maybe going to have in coming weeks. It's that I think Liverpool are going to be a different beast when they have Virgil Van Dijk back because, like, we look at Liverpool in the season going by, and they were like dropping Fabinho on the centre half and like Henderson even even at times on the centre half. Mm -hmm. They were missing Henderson in midfield, and I think so much of what was disjointed about Liverpool's attack came from their base. I don't know if you'll agree in terms of your analysis, but like I always kind of believe like whenever I look at football like and a team having a strong spine and like Liverpool kind of lost their way with that when they lost Van Dijk. And I think when they get him back and now they're talking about Kanate coming in from 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 uh see the Bundesliga. Yeah. I think you're maybe going to see something different with Liverpool where you you're maybe not going to see these problems where like Salah's going to be wide. I think you're going to see Maybe the Liverpool of the previous season. I I agree, and, and I actually I expect one of my the first matchups articles or or matchups or scouting reports to be on Liverpool. Um, what so Van Dyke? If if you and I and I've written about Van Dyke in the past. Van Dyke will and one of the reasons uh, the wing backs weren't getting the ball high, wide, and in space is because Van Dyke is usually the one playing them those, those balls. He he steps forward and he serves as the pivot. They brought Thiago Alcantara in, and that's not Thiago Alcantara's game. And they, like the club, never instructed him, so there was no no player stepping in for Van Dyke to pivot from a deep line position. So what was happening is that the ball would get stuck in the corners, and there'd be no outlet to bring it and wrap it around the other side. So I, I agree, Van Van Dyke is obviously not is going to change the defense, but he will absolutely change the Liverpool's attack. And 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 I um. And I think, just my personal opinion, I think Konate from uh, RB Leipzig is uh, is a better cent central defender than uh, Upamecano, who went for big money to uh, Bayern. But like we're, we're talking about, say Van Dijk, like what I would think about Van Dijk is that he's also got a range of passing. I think Van Dijk, where like see what you're talking about, where he steps on the pivot, he's got a long ball where like it's mm -hmm. like. Then you get the runners, you know, they try and close the space, but the runners go beyond the van. They yeah. can pack a ball, pack a ball over the top, which is there's not many centre backs can do it. Like, and that's I suppose that's why he was kind of ball on door material, like you know, really, like you know. Yeah, no, I think there's a great call about the uh, Van Dyke coming back. I mm -hmm. really do. Uh, I think it's an, an excellent call. Right, just before we move on to uh, me, Gabe, um, we're at 36 likes. I've managed to tweet out that people need to... We're still on live. We're still live. Asia are just coming. Asia are waking up. The sun's going up. It's daylight in Singapore um, now. Asia's waking up. They may all have hats. A lot of them might have hangovers like me, so they might not be awake yet. But they've got to hit that like button because we are very close to getting Nima in his Pikachu outfit. Which and before it gets a, late as well, because it's like nearly 12, 24 at night. It's a onesie, right? It's yeah, onesie. and I'm worried that in London, someone's going to murder me for wearing a Pikachu well, there is that. the street at this there time of the night. Well, That's very possible. So if you don't come back, we'll just call the police. If you just put your... Indeed. Off, if you see me back. murdered on air, please yeah. call the ambulance. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. But I actually thought it was Tinky... Oh, what is it? I thought it was Tinky Winky. No, it's not Tinky yeah, Winky. Yeah, you did. La -la, he thought it was a Teletubby. It's Lala La off the I couldn't believe it. It's the yellow one, yeah. <laughs> you might get murdered for a teletubby. I don't know. But well, I think definitely chance. Yeah, definite, definite chance. <laughs> right. Um, look, Jolene's just shouted La La out in the background. She's, you know, <laughs> she's watching. Have you hit like yet? Yeah. Good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed that that no, nobody commented that that I went too long. Thankfully, 
No, That's no, good. We, we're, we're not hearing from you, right? You know? <laughs> exactly. We're, we're not really Whereas the rest you. of us, Tom, we're, we're Tom, a liability. Tom Tom mentioned liability. what's the story about Rob Holding? Um, and I think I'm just going to say this. Stop ball watching. <laughs> <laughs> right, Rob Holding got scolded on uh, on one of our Dave. shows for 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 ball for ball watching, and and Surrey uh, got got shamed into going for Veltman over Holding since yeah, Holden and then the Holding all of a sudden started to return. Right, yeah, I know. Once again, net that hole. Don't fo- don't do hey. not follow what we do. In the two follow weeks, if you, <laughs> the two weeks following those comments, they actually scored the same. So, <laughs> right, it's over to me. So How I'm are you. Gonna, I've, I've managed to get a coffee sneaked in around the side. Just I don't who's going to gonna ask your questions? Uh, you can ask him, Hibbo. Come on. Yeah, go, guys, I will use this opportunity to get the outfit from the car. And if somehow we're on 50 likes by the time I get back, I will commit to the original. We're on 41 right now. So You're it's a good. star. Right, I'm yeah. going to play this. I'm going to play this thing. Uh, and then, Hibbo, you're loose on me. Right, this is me. <laughs> there's a there's, what about me? Let me tell you about me. Like I'm 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 from the north of England. Uh, I've lived out in the UK now for about seven years, something like that. Um, currently in Singapore, my team is Grimsby Town. Now Grimsby Town, unfortunately, just got relegated out of the football league. Um, so we're now back in non-league. I've seen them get promoted out of non-league already once, I'm afraid. Um, that's the reason for the kit look. Look at the kit. So I say, Hibbo, you've got to take your time with the kit. Oh, dear. Kit, no, I like the kit. I think a kit's nice, definitely. Yeah. That's Can it. I just say really quickly in my, in my defense for not having I, – I actually do have a kit in my FPL team, and it's Los Blancos. Oh, right. All white. Well, no. We're all white. Oh, right. Okay. No, I thought yeah. you were going to do uh, F, uh, St. No. Paul. It was not happening. It was not I thought you were going to do St. Paul. Yours, like, yours is like transparent, Gabe. I, I, can, t- I can tell the difference. I can tell the difference. I, like, I swear to God, this is like one of my like, it's one of my things. I'm on the NFL as kids. Uh, I'll get that sorted. I'll get that sorted. <laughs> um, yeah. The team name for this year is the Brothers Grimsby, again, after the film. Uh, which was not filmed in Grimsby. Let's just get that clear, just to let you know if you've seen the film. Um, what am I known for? Well, I'm known for the Captain Metric uh, and the Cat Pick. And you'll see the bottom corner, you'll see the cat there. And here he is, look. He's made an appearance. Here he comes. There's Oliver the Cat. So that's the star of the Cat Pick. Now I'm off. Right, so he's gone. Um <laughs> <laughs> And as for me, well, I've only been playing four years. I started with a 475,000 rank uh, in 1718. Uh, and I recall raging players out in those days. I would very, you know, I'm, I'm a, I work in shipping. I'm actually in oil trading. So I tend, and I work in claims. So I tend to get, sometimes, I tend to fight a lot, not so much fight, but should we say, Opinion. I'm very opinionated when it comes to situations at work, and I tend to be like that with FPL. And as a result, it clouded the way that I played FPL at the start. So you need to be you need to be more patient. I needed to be more patient and play the long game. But the last three seasons, I had fifty one thousand, ninety two thousand. It was a similar with you with with Nima the other year. Uh, this last year, that ninety two thousand year, I was at two point something million by about game week twenty. So that was a the 51,000 rank was a a gradual climb and then a hold and then a drop. And this year was a consistent climb up to as high as 3,000 in the world. And then the wheels totally came off. Um, so that's me. So uh, to finish in 38,000. So Hibbo, you can ask my questions now. So I'll, over to you. Oh, hold on. Can I ask a quick question oh, before we, we get to the official questions? Yeah, go on. It's a bit dramatic, isn't it? Well, the wheels completely came off. You're at 38k, hey, best I ever. Mean, <laughs> this is this is what I want to know. I mean, you know, we're talking about EOs and things like that, and templates and not template. I dropped from 
10,000 to 30,000 with an 85% template side. How could that happen? I don't think you can read too much under that whole template written that you see in live FPL. Like you know what I mean, though, don't you? You know what I, I mean. Know, I, I, do know, I, do, I, do, I do know what you mean. I think you can look at that template written and you say, how did I drop? Like, you know, but... If you have bad weeks, you have bad weeks. Like it's yeah. Well, well, I had about six of them. Um, I dropped from around three thousand in about game week thirty to about fifty thousand, and then I slowly climbed back up um, just to to finish the season. But yeah, um, <laughs> come I on. Then. Love, like, there's something. There's a similarity between your your laugh and uh, <laughs> and Gareth Bale's laugh back there. He's <laughs> you guys are both oh. laughing. Uh, oh God! Right. Come on, Hibbo. Fire away. Right, right so, Marner, what, what type of player would you consider yourself? So, are you, are you aggressive? Are you passive? Are you patient? Are you impatient? Like, what's, what's, you your, patient? Style? Like, what's your style? Uh, I, would, I would go as far as saying I'm Jekyll and Hyde. How so? I'm, more, I'm a bit of, I'm actually bipolar. I'm FPL bipolar. Um, I can do both. I, I can, I've, I've cut the rage transfers out. That's gone. Do I consider myself aggressive? I can be. Um, I would like to say that under normal FPL season circumstances, I am more patient than impatient. And that's something I've driven into my uh, gameplay over the last few years, making transfers much closer to the deadline rather than doing the uh, you know, transfer before the inevitable midweek Euro UCL injury, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or a cup injury. So I'm more likely to hold my transfers till late. Um, but equally, I can be quite aggressive jumping onto players. So it's a, it, I'm a funny talk. It's, it, it's a very difficult question for me, actually. I think I would probably come up with flexible. So, you know, oh, I hit, when, it, hit when it's warranted and play the long game if you can. How about that? Flexible's good. Now, what I would say is I think a dynamic's going to change about this year because with COVID, initially, we were holding transfers until late because players were maybe going to have to self-isolate and all this kind of crap. Like, yeah. you know, and I, I think that's going to be less of a factor going on the next year. So in terms of, like, um, minus fours or saving transfers, like, how, how would you pitch yourself there? Well, this is the Jekyll and Hyde. This is this is the reason why I've considered myself Jekyll and uh, uh, you know Jekyll and Hyde player. Game week one to nineteen, I took three hits last year. Game week nineteen to thirty eight, I took fourteen hits. <laughs> it's quite a lot, though. Uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> but I still went up in rank from. Oh no, not didn't go up in rank. No, I. I, I I recovered rank by hits in the end. But, you know, it. the problem with me is that I slept on Man City rotation too long. All of a sudden, the Man City... I had three Man City assets. Or the Man City assets sat there. Gundogan, I think I had Stones and Cancelo. And I slept on it. It was coming, this rotation. And I let it come. And I should have moved off them sooner. I was late on to Manchester City defence and lay off them. You know, so then you then you're in, backed into a corner, and then once you once you start having a bad week, then you try to correct it, and then it went worse, right? So I wouldn't normally take that many hits, but let's face it, this was a season like no other. I would say I think I agree with you, Hibbo. Well, in your defence, I would say in the the later part of the season, like. We spoke about it earlier. We were zigzagging between blank game weeks and double game weeks. That's yeah. kind of thing. I kind of think to a certain extent that was conducive to hats, you know, because yeah. Yeah. there was there was a lot of bank doubles that you could have played a big hat on, you know. So yeah, yeah. And that's and that's the point. it's like no other. There was no other. I mean, we I played all my chips by game week twenty six as well. Right. I was playing what was in front of me, and then more things got landed in front of me later on, like you know, putting players in front of fans. I mean, who wants to put people in front of fans for goodness sake? It didn't help me at all. Yeah. <laughs> I was delighted that fans were back in the stadiums, but you know, that just finished us off really with the right. that you know, that blank and double game week towards the end of the season. That just finished me off, really. 
So, like, if you were talking in terms of, like, your wild card, like, do you play your wild card early? Do you try and bolt team values through transfers? Like, what what, what kind of style of manager are you there? I, I had a team value of 107 million last year. So, right. I and, and I built that quite quick. I, I tend to wild card between game week three and eight. Somewhere, it did, really dependent. I'm... I try to hold it to one of the first, the first or the second international break is ten is my general planning. But look, if you need to go early, if your team is wrong, then wildcard early, and and that would be the way I would play because I do think the team value is very very important at the back end of the season. I managed. People were asking me on Twitter, "How come you've got this team, Chris? How I can't get to your team?" And that's all about the team value. So try and build the. The team value early would be my answer there. I tend, to, I do, I do tend to agree. I'm, I'm a team value man myself. So, if you're looking in terms of scouting, like, are you well? I know statistically based. Do you look? At, do you look yeah. at tables? Do you, are you like watching games? Like, how how do you evaluate a player, or how do you evaluate a player for your team? And uh, uh, numbers, numbers, uh, I am- numbers. 75% numbers, 25% eye test, I would say now. Gabe's turned me a little bit. I was probably 80, I was probably 80, 20, or even 90, 10. And the reason for that is I sit in Singapore. All the games are in the middle of the night. Every midweek game, I can't, I don't see a single game. The the, the highlights packages here are, are a one hour package, and it's like 30 seconds of each game and then about 10 minutes talking. So I end up looking at YouTube, the YouTube channels for the for the Premier League teams and watching three-minute highlights of them. That's all I can do quite often. So I go numbers first, I test second, which is completely opposite to game. That's good. I'm just going to give a bit of shout-out because we're here. We've got... I think this fella can be officially classified as the champ champ. We're going to, you know, you can have the champ, but you can have the fucking champ champ. And we've got... <laughs> No, but seriously, we've got Tom Stevenson in the chat. He's got Hall of Fame number one on the scout. I think he's number one on Premier Fantasy Tools as well. So yeah. shout out to Tom, like you know, because he's a top lad and he's a fan of the pod. Um, Marner, I yes, to, can I just comment on I mean, Mariner? Mariner and I often start at, at opposite ends, right? Where I start with the eye test and he starts with the, with the stats. It, it's interesting that where there's overlap, where we, we kind of intersect and meet um and and i think that's um that that's kind of like a strength that has come out of this collaboration of the of this uh of the, of the show and stuff where you know where we all intersect that's where we're strongest yeah i think that's fair and i mean you know i've got to be honest with you i rely on gabe's information so much like some of the templates some of the stuff out in in twitter is is first class there's some brilliant threads out there but you know i'd need to rely on the matchups more than ever now because i don't watch enough games and and it's not that i don't want to watch the games i want to watch as many as much football as i can you just ask the wife but i can't get i can't physically stay up at night to do it you know so i have to do the numbers game sorry martyr next question when's your wife due (laughs) <laughs> Je- uh, December, day of December, yes. Right, so see you see around about January. Your season's going to hit the fucking pan. I, I'm moving house in September as well. Right, so it's going to hit the pan then too. <laughs> well, I'll just I'll just do the numbers sat on the train going to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the the thing with the numbers is the numbers do themselves. All your machines start right. working. Yeah, don't worry about that. It'll be fine. Right, right so they dump back on the question. So, what 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 do you think your best moment was of last season? I actually think it happened the very last game week of the season, and that was my Mane captaincy. I was fully vindicated by that, and it won me, and it won, it got me, uh, it won me one mini league, and it and it it got me third place by one point in the works mini league, which is my my record is to maintain that top three finish, which I've had for the last three years now it, at work, and there's sixty odd players, so it's quite competitive. So yeah, Mane. No, it was, a, it was a great pack of fairness. Now, so what would you classify as your worst moment? <laughs> I've got two. Um, oh. Moving away from James Justin too early. Right. Uh, At the wild card, I wild carded him out. 
Uh, really? Because I because I, I can't remember why. Was it this long running saga of Pereira's I, coming Pereira, back? I, Pereira's coming back. Pereira's coming back. Pereira's coming back. Um, also, the uh, I'm going to say I'm going to sound like you, Gabe uh, uh, Hibbo, but I can't remember his name. Um, I, I know I've remembered it now. The wee laddie from Crystal Palace, the four million wee laddie Ferguson. Oh, I, I, Nathan, I, Nathan I, Ferguson. He never played all season. No. Oh. But anyway, was a, that was, was the biggest. One. He was the biggest dud of all time. Really, it, like it was. Know. He was the biggest dud of all times. The worst pick ever, probably. And then, obviously, the other one is the the Sterling triple captain over Gundogan. That killed me. And then Sterling took less than a minute to score the following game week. Always away. Less so, than a minute. I think it was wait, a minute or a minute or a minute and a half or something ridiculous. So yeah, that was that was it. So can I ask you just just real quick? Was it um was there a little bit of pricing bias then in, in going with Sterling over Gundawan, or, or did you have other thoughts about it? I maybe no. I, I had Gundawan and I'd already been successful with Gundawan. I, I just felt that you know Sterling was gonna come good at some stage, and I was that it was a little bit of a punt, but he'd. He'd create, I think from memory, he'd create, he wasn't looking too bad, just wasn't necessarily finishing anything off. The matchup um, was decent for him. As, yeah, as far I, as, so, I, yeah. I remember we, we talked about the matchup on the field and it, yeah. and it was decent for him. Yeah. But I wonder, and I, and I know other people went with him as well, Nick Khan, and, and, um, and I wonder if, if there was some pricing bias or if people, um, you know how how much people are affected by that pricing bias. I, I when I, when I triple captain Gundogan that week, I, you know, I, I did get some some questions of like, well, he's not a premium asset. Um, to... I'm I'm not known for pricing bias because you'll see that in the metric in a minute. I started mm -hmm. with the metric from the point of view of only premium players, and then we very quickly realised we had to start inclu including some of these lower priced players because they were just performing so well. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not prone to that really, mm -hmm. but I think it was probably the matchup game. My plan, my plan now, well, it's a bit of a rough plan, but is to do a bit of analysis around that yeah. kind of general topic you're talking about in the next couple yeah. of weeks. It might be my first article um, of the season, really. But That'd we'll be nice. See. It'd be good to read. It'd be good to read. Uh, we'll wait and see. So, if you could, if you could give us a lesson learned, like what what lesson did you learn? Uh, any at all? Or? Yeah, there is. There's one big one. And that is, if a player gets one return and looks good, I'm interested. A player returns the following week, next time, let's go. Not the third week is going to blank. Hmm. Right? Because what I'm thinking now, you see, I automatically think, oh, he's overperforming now because I look at the numbers. Oh, he's overperforming his XG. It's not, you know, it's not sustainable, blah, blah, blah. Well, of course it's not sustainable, but it might be for another couple of weeks. And Lingard, Willock, two great examples. Players who I was talking up, uh, certainly Lingard I wasn't talking up, but Willock I was talking up for ages, never brought him in. Always thought that he was going to fall off. He didn't, did he? Um, and I think that's it. Is that the fact that I am too much sometimes of a, as I say, I'm flexible, but sometimes do I miss an opportunity just relying on the numbers? Possibly, you know? So I just have to be a bit more, a bit more, should we say, a bit more flexible in, in my gameplay. Well, like looking, looking at, say, FPL Twitter, now, there was large debates on FPL Twitter about players being sustainable and unsustainable. And lots of that last season revolved around Lingard. And, like, to me, now, I must have voted Lingard, like, uh, the same probably as yourself. But, like, it's like any player. It's like when they're in a heater, like, I think you just have to kind of get them on. And, I, I, I like, I must add there, like, you know, even, even, if, even if you weren't watching the games, even if you weren't really looking at the stats... If you had a look and says, "Oh, Lingard scored two goals the last couple of weeks," you would have been you would have been good to buy a man, and that's where like casual players like they're not thinking as deeply about XG and yeah sustainability. And I kind of think at times as FPL managers we go too deep. Yeah, and I think I think, I think, I think you can watch a game. He smashes one in the top corner from like twenty five yards. Yeah. XG first like no point not. Fucking five or something like that. There, and like people going, 
No, but yeah. people will uh, say, well, he's, he, he's not performing as the XG. And you go, but he scored an absolute worldy. Like, you know, it's, it's, that's a man on form. Yeah, look look to uh, X, XG on target then. Just I, grab, no. go grab another XG. <laughs> Well, I'm going to have to do something. But, I mean, look, it's it's a fair point. I think, you know, it's a good point that you've got to – You've if you see this, you know, you don't love to look a gift horse in the mouth, right? You know, you're looking at someone like Willock and someone like Lingard and Rafinha. And I'll tell you another player who was uh, who I didn't get oh, on. Boys. Who, Cresswell. Oh, boys. Cresswell. Boys. It happened. Boys. We've got five. Oh, you're at 50. Right. right. Are we going to do this before legs, I do boys? Are we going to do this before I do my captaincy uh, thing? No, do you, do your captaincy thing. Right, all right. Let's keep going then. So, uh, right, are you ready? So now let's go then. Um, and then we're going to bring Neymar in at the end, I think. Or so. oh, in the end. <laughs> well, here we go. That's a new graphic, everybody, isn't it? Nice. So, mm -hmm. All right, let's first things first. Let's very, very quickly talk about this captaincy metric. Um, I'm coming on at one hour 45 minutes in. We were meant to be going for an hour. <laughs> we were never going to do an hour. That was no, never we, gonna... we all thought <laughs> too never. much. But anyway, That's kudos to us for hanging on. And if anyone's still with us, great. But the good thing is you can come in and watch all these four sections. We'll timestamp them, and you can watch one a day for four days. There you go. Half an hour at a time, right? Um so anyway, right, this captain symmetric, we've already been talking about it. Um, cut a long story short, last the season before last, I had a really bad season with captaincy. And I needed to think about what to do. So I thought, right, okay, let's try and devise something. I listened to a podcast by uh, the, the FPL winner from the season before last. Well, actually, he was second, but he got pushed, pumped, punted up to first after some discretion indiscretions by the player who i think who was who finished top on the points uh joshua bull i don't know if you've come across him he's a mathematician at oxford university yeah he's, um, in, the, he's in the hub chat is he yeah well well joshua came up with the thing about um you know that fixture difficulty is very important and things like that and then generally speaking it's premium players who are the most likely to return so I basically went out there then on the back of what he said and watching that uh, watching that YouTube channel um, was to develop a, met uh, a metric. And so how does it work? Well, I'll talk about fixture difficulty in a minute, but it does work very heavily on fixture difficulty. And this season, it will now take into account home and away. So basically what it will do is, it, for example, expected points will now change the basis the player is home or away um very important and also you know the challenge with the metric this year is the fixture difficulty we haven't had much in front of fans recently so how how is that going to play out um you know who who knows um but yeah so fixture difficulty we look at expected points from the last six and then we look at returns so how many returns did they get to get one return or two returns how many times do they get one or more returns? How many times do they get two or more returns? So you're basically looking to net that hole, right? That That's basically it. And the final thing we factor in is rotation risk and also how many games they're playing that week. So let's say uh, the double, let's say double game week for Man City. Would we put it down? Would we multiply them by two? No, because they're not going to play both games. The players are not going to play both games. They might play one and a quarter. They might play one and a third game, something like that. The triple game week, I think, um, was it maximum? Who, did anyone play two game? Did it, anyone play a total of two game weeks? Not far off, was it? The triple. The triple, the, was, the triple was United's triple, right? United's triple game week. Mm -hmm. the, the I think we were pitching them at around 1.75. Yeah, I think we had about 1.75. If 1. I remember. 75. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's the idea. So, uh, and yeah, there's the record for the metric there, 79%. It ended up with 640 points. So it's got to go some to... It didn't catch Ajit Dillon. I think Ajit over 700 points. <laughs> That's captain. <That's> <laughs> it's, it's insane. But yeah, I mean, at one stage, it had only blanked once in about eight in about 16 weeks, uh, through from 18 to about 34. And then we had a, a, an amazing... I mean, look, we're going to say Gabriel Jesus, right? But... 
I can remember, Gabe, the conversation we had about Gabriel Jesus. We said, I said, I, I rang him, I, I spoke to Gabe. I said, how on earth is Jesus top of this metric? I said, I, what do I do? Do I delete him? <laughs> and, and Gabe went, no, 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 just leave him in and let's see how it goes. So we did. <laughs> look what happened. But no, uh, look at these. There's a Greenwood, game week 35, 19 points, you know. Uh, Iniacho was a great pick as well. Uh, Lacazette, although that was a substitution com coming in because other players didn't play. But I, I think it's important to look look at these well. in relation to to the popular picks in that week. Yes, right. So it's a Greenwood instead of Bruno, for example, in in an easy matchup, and and most people would would have gone for Bruno. We probably yeah. did, as to be fair. Um, yeah, and, and and I thought that that's what I always thought was impressive. It was it was Ianacho over another premium pick. Um, yeah. You know, you have Gundogan in there, you have Grealish in there. Um, so I, yeah, there's a, there's a little sprinkle of of some very vari of variable options. I think you can see at the start of the season it was a lot more settled in its ways. And then as we got during the season, we we realised that we couldn't work with these should we say non pre without some of these non premium players so we had to bring them in um well but yeah. I, I think that i think that mirrors what i think it was um hippo that was saying earlier is that you know early early in the season you do you should go con somewhat conservative a little more template stay stay with the pack and and it seems that that's what the metric did as well yeah 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 definitely um so very quickly moving on to fixture difficulty so Obviously, this will all be released in due time, but this is, at the moment, uh, basis the matchups for the first five game weeks of the season. You'll see that there's um, basically um, rankings from 1 to, to 20. And that's the matchup. So, for example, if you look on the right-hand side of the screen, you've got Arsenal um, away at Brentford. Right, so Arsenal are positive. Um, they're green on both, which means they've got a positive matchup for attack and a positive matchup for defence. How do I get there? How do we do this? Well, the way it works is it basically compares XG, expected goals against expected goals conceded, attack against defence, shots in the box and headers against shots in the box and headers conceded, and big chances created. Uh, big chances and big chances conceded. Um, so that's how it works. So it, it, it purely works on, on numbers. It churns it into a, a, a an algorithm. Um, it fits around Ben Krellin's one to seven numbers. And the reason for that is I originally wrote this to plug it into Ben Krellin's spreadsheet. Uh, so that's the reason why it's one to seven. In fact, now it's not to seven. I've had to change it because Sheffield United <laughs> broke the metric at one point. There were about eight. <laughs> didn't, didn't Chelsea break the metric in the other direction? Chelsea broke no? the metric the other way. Yeah, Chelsea yeah, broke their, their the defense the other way. Yeah, but no, so that's the idea. So let's say um, we're looking at this Arsenal against Brentford. So it was I can't I haven't got the numbers there, but let's yeah. say can, we, uh, can Arsenal I ask was, a question? Yeah, very quickly. Yeah, how how do you factor like how do you factor on like promoted sites? That's difficult. What I've done is I've actually for this. I've looked at their performance in the championship and then I looked at Norwich's and Watford's performance in the Premier League the last time they were in and fit them up or and, and fitted Brentford up or down on that on the basis of where they were. So right. um I think that was the only way I could so do like it. Some, so like some kind of divisor like compared championship compared yeah, to Premier it's the only way I could do it. You've got to you know, at the end of the day, if you've got no, 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 data, no, that's, you've got no, no data. that's fair, that's fair. I just wanted to know that. Like, yeah, but that's the idea. So the idea is green's good, red's bad. The higher the number, the better. The lower the the the, the worse the negative, the worst. And then what we'll do is we'll be showing you as we go on, we'll be showing you uh, the matchups on a week by week basis. So look, look, Crystal Palace away at Chelsea. It's not rocket science to say that's not a great matchup, right? Do you see what I mean? Um, and Liverpool, Liverpool at home against Norwich. Uh, sorry, away at Norwich, three point three. Like Liverpool, okay. Um, at attack, so very positive for attack, but actually defensively, not that good. And remember, Liverpool did, although they improved a lot towards the end, they didn't have, they didn't keep a lot of clean sheets. So the metric 
doesn't necessarily like uh, Liverpool defenders at this moment, but it does like the fact that if you were looking at Trent Alexander-Arnold, for example, 3.3 plus 0.6 is 3.9 divided by 2 is 2. So you would look at him as a 2 there. Mm because he can get an attack or a defensive return. So that's the way that's the way it roughly works. So so yeah, so the thing with this, right? And I have a real problem with fixture difficulties and I'm very vocal about it. I hate red, white and green. Three colored fixture difficulties just a waste of time. It's not fit for purpose. So basically this is our fit for purpose fixture difficulty um you know and i think that's the way we want to play it going forwards it'll ch it might it might mutate into something else that's a horrible word i shouldn't have used that given the virus is flying around but it, it could change of course slightly but it's very dependent on the data and how we manipulate it um so that's that and then the last thing which we've got which i'll be doing this year is an algorithm um, which tries to predict the players who score the most or the most who's going to score the most points in a particular game week so that's tick the captaincy metric is a selected number of players that we pick the algorithm is all the players who are um who have not rotated more than 30 percent apart from one wild card pick um and again we look at it from the point of view of the fixture difficulty but we also look at goal involvement uh, expected clean sheets and expected points. So it's a little bit, it's a slightly different type of metric. So it looks at it in a slightly different way. So it's it's very good to play one off against the other. So I use the metric, for example, as identifying, uh, sorry, the, the algorithm as identifying an asset. I could use it for a free hit as well. Um, I could fit it over a period of time and try to build a wildcard team. If I wanted to look at fixed difficulty over five or ten weeks, I could do that as well. But the general idea is that this is, you know, Willock, for example, popped up on the algorithm um, quite quickly, interestingly enough, as did Lingard. So I'm actually going to be looking at this Algo 11, not necessarily for which players I'm going to necessarily bring in, but who it's starting to throw towards the top of the list, because that's another way of us finding a way how we can perhaps identify these assets early. Well, I think if you can, I think if you combine the algo eleven, maybe with ownership, and you're looking at well, who's just jumped on the page in terms of like you're saying what, and he's like yeah. coming in at like 0.5 percent or like one percent ownership. The same with the other players you've mentioned. It could be an angle, like you know, if you if like if you're looking that kind of direction. Yeah, that's an interesting one. The only thing is, is how you merge all the data. Uh, you know, these aren't manual entries. So, for example, if you'd need to have a delta of how high, uh, you know, how much a player's ownership had changed during that week. So if you could find where or over a period of time, so if you could find that, then that would be something which would be really interested to build in. But I don't know how I'd do it at the moment. No. So, so, yeah. So, yeah. So that's basically me, um, the numbers man. So one, one thing there that I, that I really appreciate about these is it's you know we 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 make fun of the of the fact that yeah okay the, the the numbers kind of work for themselves but it's it's in the the constant every week um, like diagnostic right you you kind of do a diagnostic every single week and then you question th certain things and I just peel the curtain back a little bit from net net that hall we have these conversations on whatsApp on the back end of like what do you guys think about that the, the the metric is saying this or the algo is saying this what do you guys think about that and those conversations on the back end I, I find really really fascinating so it's more that the the questions that these numbers bring up more than the answers that the numbers give that that is a uh, really fascinating yeah I think that's a fair way of looking at it basically what I want to do is provoke thought I, this these metrics the the captaincy metric and things like that they cannot fact they don't factor in what pep's going to do right they don't factor in you know nobody nobody should ask a, a content creator is someone going to start we we don't know half the time we've got a feeling but we can't be certain so we have to factor all these decisions in and that's why we try our best but ultimately you know there's a couple of times with the captain metric that we had to rely on someone who was second or third down the list. 
because the others didn't mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we have to look at it that way. Um, but no, the idea is, is that it's a thought provoker. It gives people an idea of what they might want to do. And ultimately, if it points people towards netting that haul, as we say, and getting a great finish and netting that captaincy and this, that and the other, then all the better. But I think the captain metric is going to have a, a, be an interesting start to the season because we're, we are in a situation where we are getting fans back into grounds with no away fans till Christmas. Right? Now, how's that going to go? Is that going to mean, you know, are we going to see even bigger bias towards home performances? You know, or is it going to put players under more? It could put, equally put players under more pressure. So, no, I think I think you'll see home field advantage with no doubt. Yeah, I yeah. think you will. But how big is it going to be bigger than what it was, for example, post lockdown? Um, there's, a lockdown. Guy, there's, there's a guy on Twitter, um, Sir Talp, he goes by FPL Optimized, and he factors on, I think, 0.15 for home field advantage. He, he, he's producing these kind of. Models and stuff like that at the moment. This stuff's really, really good. If you, if you don't check it out, check it out. And yeah. um, no, it obviously wasn't a factor last year, but I think it's going to be a factor this year, definitely. And if you're saying there's going to be no away fans on, it's going to be even bigger. Like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so anyway, we need a big reveal now. So um, here we go. We, go. Uh, we achieved fifty likes. So we need we need Pikachu. Where's Pikachu? I'm going to make my way with a voice entrance. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Hang on a minute. Let me see if I can... Just let me see if I Hello. can just... Wait there. Wait there. Wait there. Oh, hang on. I wonder if I can... Oh, no, I can't do it. How can I do it? No, just try it. Go on. Fire away. Just, just, just go. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's a little spin. He's got his tail... <laughs> My dog, my dog, my dog doesn't know what to think. Have a look. <laughs> your, your dog thinks you're going to a rave. <laughs> Julian, have you seen this? <laughs> you love your tail. Your head's badly fucking. Badly cut. Ben, Ben, what's going on? High five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ben, uh, hang on. Wait, wait a second. Just wait a second, boys. That's Just I've, I've got to do something here. Right, here we go. Right, right. Get the oh, screenshot. Yeah. So make sure you get to get that chest in there, Nima. Yeah. Oh, I should have worn my chain. It's a it shame. Is. I forgot everything. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, here we go. And it, there we go. We've got Bella the dog. We've got Gabe. Look at <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, Ready? Yeah. Hang on a minute. Here we go. No. Look, look, look. There yeah. it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll be back with the chain for the Q and A. One second. Well, Q and A. We've, we've been going two hours and two minutes. I saw that there's some three questions you've put in. I don't know if you've well, answered. Them right, well, we will answer them. So let's I've, let's crack these oh, questions and then we'll then we'll get out of here. Where where have you gone? You can't. No, you, 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 stay on you can't screen. leave us. You can't leave us. <laughs> right, let's ask these questions. Who wants to be the question master? I go to the question. Who wants to be the question master? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll throw them out there. This is from Praz. Uh, have you guys found it harder to do better at FPL since becoming content creators? It's a great question. Who's going to start that one? Uh, Pikachu, tell us all about that. this question here. Have you guys found it hard to do better at FPL since becoming a content creator? Well, looking at the state of that, God help us what this answer is going to be like. Yeah, no, I've um, <laughs> I've definitely become better, I think. Um, I make more calculated decisions, which goes into my play style of being passive. So I like to kind of be very risk-averse generally, but three, four times a season, I'll take a big risk. So to give you some perspective, I would probably now be more aware of a template and EO, and that's something I never really took into account. So... Since becoming a content creator, I think about it more. And I don't just kind of pick a player because of it, but I will have a sword and shield strategy, which I, I guess many veteran managers will reference. Because at the end of the day, like that's kind of, you need to see what's happening. And about maybe eight players in your team, seven players, if you're lucky, are the same as everyone else. 
So you only really have three, four positions to make up space. And a lot of times it's a cheap defender. So it's kind of like, you're going to have to get lucky, right? Like you've got to be the one owning Dallas at the beginning of a season or something like that. So now with the content, I'm more willing to kind of, on the community on Twitter as well, people challenge you. So when you write, I'd say, actually, if there's like a rogue pick in your team, people will rip it apart. Certain people like Hibbo will get away with having like a whole gate and like talk about <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer a question, right? <laughs> see, 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 since I started writing um, threads and for Fantasy Football Hub, I found it harder. I, I can't say, I can't say it was the same for me as it was for Nima. I kind of felt like on the week, all my thoughts leading up to say like a Friday or a Thursday were all geared towards what I'm going to write, and they were they weren't geared towards my team. And that's like a that's a big change I want to make this week. My team's first. Doesn't matter what. And after that, I'm going to write down whatever I want to write. But I don't I don't want to make my team secondary anymore, which is what happened from say game week 19 on. That's a great answer. And I think should we say there's also this. I mean, look, if anybody follows me and pick and, and match it and copies my team, then God help them. But there's a it does happen. People do copy people's teams, and you know, if, for example, you've said, you know, you've done a you've done a Lee or something like that, and you've said you're not going to do one thing, and then you change it, then there's an element. There's does that stick in the back of your mind that you know I'm I was all set in the show to go one way, and then I've gone another way. So I'm always very careful in a show to caveat it, unless I make live transfers on air like I did with Nima once and screw it up. Minus eight, yeah, right. minus, but but yeah, I think I'm minus always eight on a drunk for, Tuesday night for Nima. Yeah, I'm always yeah, quite careful. Imagine what I've been through, and you think a Friday Pikachu was going to oh. be tough. One day in a future stream, guys, if you keep following and sailing on this road down that that hall with us for the 38 game weeks. There will be 100 like and 1,000 like forfeits coming for many, many more episodes. Well, actually, we've got I've, I've got something else to talk about subscriptions next. So there's definitely going to be a forfeit when we come to subscriptions now. Never mind, That's never mind what we've already been thinking about. Um, but no, I mean, look, just what finishing from my perspective, I I tend to tr I'm still trying to play my own game. I do agree with you, Hibo. I think it is more challenging to play your own game. Mm. I think it is because you. Just in the back of your mind, you've just got this thought of, you know, pe a lot of people, for rightly or wrongly, rely on what we say. I mean, you know, what we are. I mean, I I I use the term expert very very carefully in my job, very carefully, because quite frankly, the moment we think we know everything in life, we're dead. You've got to keep learning. You've got to keep moving. You've got to keep evolving, whether it be in work, whether it be in life, or whether it be in FPL. Right. So let's not think that we're experts. We're not. We're giving a percent. We're giving our own perspective from our own lens, and with our own views. Right. Land. If people like it, fabulous. But if people have got uh, opposing views, then great. I might take that. What I mean, uh, Raj, for example, a great follower of what uh, you know of. Uh, of the of the channel he's he said to me the other day i think he said to gabe he said you've changed the way i play fpl now fabulous that's that's yeah. that's powerful that, that that's what i you know it's um that's nice that's but, nice but, when you get things like that but, but so, that 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 is more about process it's not about who to pick and that, that's no. why for me i'm, I'm with nima on this uh, it has it hasn't um been more difficult at since creating content to, to play fpl because I, I I try not to make predictions. I just I have a process and things I see, and we just we're saying what we see. The the predictions we make ourselves with our own teams, and sometimes they work out, and sometimes they don't. But yeah. what we're Whereas, trying to show people is a different process. Yeah, and that's what. Whereas what I'm doing in a sense is I am putting my neck on the block a little bit more with the metric and yes. and things like that. That's but, more. But that's anyway, more predictive. Fine. That's true. At the end of the day, it's a numbers game, and there's plenty of caveats about it as well. Yes. Um, so yeah. So okay, so that's that question. Second question from Bungle the Gunner. 
your boy there, Neymar. Um, with What's some the players, just I thought I'd preface that with the, the so upsetting that he would even consider either. <laughs> that, like, that's a fair comment. I mean, look, if I mean, look, we've, I'm sure we've got a lot of Arsenal fans on, but I don't think many of them wear Pikachu outfits. Well, that's true too. Would Son <laughs> be a smart pick if Kane moves on? Oh, hippo. Um, I think it'd be a worse pick. He's gone up. He's gone up in price. Um, Kane was such a creative force in the team. So, like, if you look at how many other goals he scored last year. Loads were like tandem goals where like they were both kind of assisting each other in the goal. And I think they're going to like that. They're linked with Slavish from Fiorentina. He's a new player in the league. So I think if Kane left and they send a new striker, Spurs would be in a void for me. I, yeah. I, would, I would say that, I mean, Spurs don't even have a manager. We know so little exactly. about, about Spurs. It, you know, it's, it's there are too many things up in the air for for a team like that to, to really know. I think Son Son could be a smart pick. It's possible. We don't know who they're going to buy. We don't know what manager is going to come in. I I just think we just don't know. No, it's too, too early. early. It's too, it's too early. early. You can see the reason why. I, I do completely get what you mean about if Kane isn't there, is Son going to get the service? And I think that's a uh, that's thing. But then again, you know, the counter to that is, you know, is Son going to play down the middle? Is that going to be, is, yeah, is that going to be better for him? Is that better? Yeah, we don't know. But then uh, I think I think Son of Spurs when Kane was there, Son effectively played down the middle anyway because if Kane dropped deep, Son was always true. the runner from midfield. Like you know, so is he going to get that same kind of service? I I would yeah. doubt it. You know, no, they would have to basically reinvent themselves as a team i think and the jury would be okay i think Good. what i would just add as well is his first two games of man city and wolves and i'd be very happy to wait and see what spurs do whoever their new manager is what happens with kane and other signings um okay. you could then jump on him quite nicely in time for watford crystal palace mm -hmm. so i think he's even an option for an early wild card maybe if things go that way but you don't need to start with him i don't think no. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, fair point. Fair point. Uh, right, we've got a question from Garf at FPL Shark. I typically break the season into three to four game weeks at a time. What strategies do you use? So, well, I'll start. I tend to look at five to six week chunks. Because I, mean, I there think... Was, there was a whole conversation about this in the chat and there are some people that agree with you, uh, Mariner. So I, I, I'm curious to hear the, uh, the to be honest, I didn't, I didn't, I've not even looked in the chat. I've genuinely not looked in the chat. The way I look at it is that, you know, three to four weeks, you know, you've got to think, let's say you, t let's say you're making a, you're making a wild card side up. I might even look even longer because what I might do is I might have players who sit in, are perhaps sitting on the bench, might be sitting on the bench early, but that might then come into a fixture. Let's say there's a fixture swing or something like that. After a few weeks, you're thinking, right, okay, at this point, and they might then come into thoughts. Suchek was a good example. Mm -hmm. Suchek sat in my team for ages waiting for that fixture swing, but that was a longer-term move. But that's the rough idea. So I think if you're looking at five to six weeks, from my perspective, I think it's long enough, it's short enough to be able to perhaps try to predict and long enough to give the players you've got time to produce. Is that is that sensible? Is that... Hmm. It's, I think that makes sense if you're looking... I don't know. I see it a little bit differently. I think looking back, it makes sense to look back maybe five or six weeks. But looking forward in, in, a, in a time period of five to six weeks, you're going to get a variety of different matchups in that time. Yeah. So it, I think you can and, – and, and form can change in that time as well. So I have a rough time looking that far ahead. Um, but I will look that far and further back, depending on what I'm looking for. Yeah. But as I, I, it's for me, it's usually like three, sometimes four. Four is a little bit of a stretch for how you know how how I can envision it moving forward. I mean, the other thing is my fixture difficulty normally covers the next five or six game weeks, so maybe I'm being drawn into my own data and looking at it from that perspective anyway. But what I do quite often with the fixture difficulty is I will take a game week out. 
So I will look at, you know, maybe in game week one, two, four, and five, this player's got a particularly good match, particularly good matchups. Whereas somebody else, obviously, this is where the rotation comes in, might have a very good matchup in three. So right. that's why I I look at it like that. Um, I mean, there was already some very, very interesting um possible rotations. I think Brighton, Leeds, and Leicester, I think particularly a three which might look like there might be a possibility of doing something there um when you're looking at the cheap defenders is what i spotted quite early on uh when i was looking at the data but yeah that's how i play it hippo what about you i would tend to agree with the whole kind of three to four weeks but what i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a caveat and say i kind of categorize my players on the high impact transfers and low impact transfers so if i'm talking about say defenders that cost like 4 million, 4.5 million, whatever. I don't really want to be changing those guys out. I want to be setting those boys on my team to go right. As you're saying there, they might rotate well with another player. They're long term. But in terms of maybe my strikers or my midfielders, I might be looking at, say, players coming on around 7.5 million and thinking, well, they've got six good game weeks or they've got three or four good game weeks and I'm potentially going to change them out. So, I do agree, but like I do categorize them on the like high impact transfers, low impact transfers, and like defender transfers. I try and avoid them if I'm being totally honest with you. Yeah, no, I think it's fair. Yeah, I think that's very especially fair. especially cheap defenders. It's like you pick them for a reason. Leave them on there. Don't get too clever. You know how often are you going to play them if they're like a fourth or fifth defender? Like you know, it's... I think my hangover is developing, Nima. So I'm now not sure whether I've actually asked you this question or not. Um, no, so I, I, I will say so. I completely agree with Hillary. So, for me, even at the start of the season, I tried to get like normally my previous style of play has always been to have a three back line, so I don't really play with four or five defenders. I've done it more recently in previous seasons, but I think I'm going to revert to that. Normally, I have that like, one premium, maybe one mid price, and then three 4.5s, and that will be planned out sometimes with ludicrous number of weeks like 10 weeks mm -hmm. plus. Because I just really don't want to change them. Like, goalkeepers is the same. I'm stubborn. Like I said, I didn't have Martinez last year at any point. Because I just, I do not want to use a transfer on that. And sometimes it will work. Some people will take a minus four on a goalkeeper transfer. And over the long term, it pays off. So I'd also say when you take kids, it's better if it's for a long term. So I think if you're bringing in a transfer that's to fix an issue and to have a long term replacement, if there are also a captaincy option, it's worth those hits for me every time. So I would take hits to fix my team. It's not that I'm against taking hits. It's just... Some players will play way more aggressively and chase the high points. And I think, as Hibo is saying, that means you could just look one to two or maybe even three weeks ahead if there's a double. Because that could just be like the space of maybe 10 days in real time. So if a player is informed in those 10 days and you bring them in even on a hit, that could be a 20, 30, 40 point return. So I think we've seen that as well with like the Euros. Certain players like a Ronaldo or Benzema, they're just constantly getting the points, forwards both getting his points. Certain picks, once you get onto them, you've got to stay there and ride out their form. And I, I regret that for not getting Lingard earlier last year. And because with him, I was looking too far ahead. So it was the opposite. Yeah. I was like, oh, he's, you know, in the next six weeks, well, my player should surely outscore him. But the problem was, he just kept getting higher and higher in effective ownership and damaging me. So going forward next season, I'm still going to look at I think, six weeks on average is my number I would summarize with. But uh, yeah, that's I don't want to do any transfers like that as well, only attacking players, really. I mean, look, this is very, like I said, these, these are very broad questions. And I think this is where we want to be at this time of the season, right? We, yes. don't, want to yeah. pick yeah. Not, we don't want to be answering, do we pick A or B at this moment in time? We want to be looking at strategies, lessons learned, you know, what, how, how best to, how best to, uh, to, to build towards the season. And I would go as far as saying to the guys who are watching, you know, we've got our ideas on content. And I think we'll just very quickly touch on that at the end. Um, but, you know, if there's something you particularly would like us to look at, you know, net that hall at gmail.com. Drop, drop us an email. We'll answer you. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll do our best to accommodate you. You know, if you've got something, a feature you'd like us to consider, if you've got a feature you'd like to consider doing on, on the show yourself, give us a shout. We're always happy to, we're always happy to, to hear from you. Um, well, have we got any more questions? And then I think we need to, shall we say, get out of here. Yeah. So there was a breach at Man City. 
I, I think that's a, probably a longer conversation. Yeah. We can save that for, for the next. Yeah, yeah let's save that. Save that. Um, what's target. our target? What's our target ranks? This is a great question from John. Um, my target rank is always personal best. So now mine's now thirty eight thousand. So that's my target. I think if I think we have to be there's always an and I don't want to sound remotely disrespectful to anyone who finishes really high up, but there is always an element of luck, good luck, bad luck. You know we all have it, uh, and I think it. I think if you can just improve, you know, or even if you play, if, let's say you have a bad start, and then you climb the ranks at the end. That's equally just as good. That's a real achievement. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the way I would say it. You know, try and look to either beat your rank or do something different. Very interesting. Yeah, well said. That's that's how I that's what I think anyway. Um, rough ideas ranks, boys. What we after top hundred Ks minimum. Is that normal? I get upset outside of top 100k. And I always hate, <laughs> I can't say I've had like five top 100k finishes in the last five years because right. two of them were like one, two, two, and one, three, two. So for me, 100 is the number, but really the truth is uh, for me, top 80k is the number because right. that's top 1% based on the current number. So yeah. I do the percentages more because a lot of people with like, say, seven, eight top 10k finishes, they had them in years with one to four million players. Now there's like eight to 10 million, information's everywhere. News isn't just given to the nerds who were on the forums like me on Reddit back then or people on Scout, all these other boards, right? So the data is freely available for everyone now. It's very difficult to differentiate and beat people. I think that's what I've realized. But over 38 weeks, if you've got a system and you're consistent and stick to it, you should be able to generally get there or thereabouts to top 100K, I think. Therefore, if you can get top 10K, fantastic. But there is an element of luck. I agree with you. And it's about your 50-50 choices going right and your captaincy is pretty much being nailed. I think those are the two key things there. I think I think that's fair. And of course, what we'll have to say is I've just made I've just decided on on, on a challenge is that there is a forfeit for the person finishing bottom this year. I've just decided that out of us four. Uh so just in in the uh, <laughs> given that we've got someone in fancy dress in the bottom left hand corner of my screen. <laughs> I have some green tea as well, this the FL stag dude. In case anyone asks, it's not normal antics. Don't worry, <laughs> we'll put you off the show in the future. We are not furries here. Yeah. Or, or, or if you yeah, enjoy morning. it, we'll, we'll get yeah. him on. Or if you enjoy well. it, I'll waggle my tail one more time before we This go. is some kind of like weird cosplay fucking setup. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was it was for the foot goal for the stag. I guess we deserve the backstory to end it off. So I had to wear the hungover off my face. I'd be sick full time before I even got there. And I had to wear this for three hours of foot golf. And it was really hot and it was really intense. First round, I wore jeans. I had to get rid of the jeans. Then I just had like boxes on. Then I had no t shirt. It was just, it was too oh, much. Oh, come on. Now oh, it's what? getting even worse. <laughs> no, but just, just, to, just to answer John's question, I'll say my target every season is top 10K. What am I going to do to make sure I get closest as possible? And an analysis of me last season. I tend to unbalance my side with like premium players and I don't spend enough on my defense. So that's something I want to do about better, like have a more certain defense. A yeah, premium, a premium like Trent, and then maybe no defender cheaper than four million. Like, you know, have a bit of balance across the board, maybe a couple yeah. of fives, a couple of four point fives, and have like in general a more balanced squad. Because I think if you're going to unbalance your squad early doors, you're maybe going to leave yourself more prone there early wild card whereas if you have like players that you can sub on you might go well you know what i don't need the wild card this week because i have x player to come on you know hmm. and it's interesting i mean john's mentioning in the chat you know he, he would go it's to say my target's number one i mean that's great but attitudes obviously spot on you know let's try and win the damn thing but you know realistically at one stage my prediction i wanted to finish in the top uh, you know a three a three figure finish right that's what we were talking about uh, around game week 30 but then i had to readjust my targets and i think that's the point is this is my target now but ultimately we readjust as we go during the season because there's no point beating yourself up about it it's 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 fpl it's a game it's not life you know and i do see and um, maybe we should touch on the mental aspect one day not tonight 
Uh, but another day, you know, it's probably well worth a discussion about that type of thing because I think we should ask Ross for uh, FPL Raptor to come on for that and tell us a little bit about. Do you know what? That would be lovely. It might be a really good pre-season thing to do. Actually, I'm very up for that. I think that, that would be, be really an exciting. Idea. I'm, I'm yeah, participating in, in Pikachu. Please, stuff. please, Pikachu. Please try to arrange. That's what I'm here for, guys. I'm here for a good time and meeting all of you. For a <laughs> That's my contribution. <laughs> um. So I think questions-wise, I think we're about done. I'm, I'm just going to go back to the screen. And basically, we put this out a couple of weeks ago on the back of the – or a week or so ago on the back of the very frightening pictures of uh, Christian Eriksen and the – you know, the thankfully he's okay. Um, and we, we obviously at that hall send, send him and his family all the best. But what we thought is that, you know, we're trying to grow our subscribers. It doesn't – cost us anything to, you know, to to do it doesn't cost you guys anything to do it but it does us so what we're thinking about doing is if we reach a, a thousand subscribers we're gonna do we're gonna i think we're gonna donate to charity before anyway guys aren't we i yes. think we've generally decided yes. we're gonna put the yeah, charity we're it, we? and then we're gonna continue in our realm of fpl robin hoods in that we are not gonna ever charge for anything but what we might do one day is we might say, look, we'll do extra stuff, but for a donation to charity. And I think that's the idea we want to go down. We want to be somewhere. We're going to pick charities throughout the, for this season, for next season, across the world. Um, and we will do our best to raise a little bit of money for charity through FPL and through the content and through the teams, everybody who's on it. So hit 1,000 subscribers and we'll donate some money. Hit 2,000 subscribers, we'll donate more. We haven't quite decided. I think we, was it a couple of hundred dollars or something like that once we reach 2,000 subscribers? It's not a lot of money, but it's nice to do. And I think if we can make a difference as a, as a show, as a channel, and put a little bit back into the world, I think it's a good thing. Um, so, yeah, so that's what we're going to try to do. So if you don't already subscribe, hit that button and get Pikachu to put his hand in his pocket. <laughs> Although he's probably just skint now because he's just spent his entire life savings on his wedding. It feels like it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what Jazz is arriving in. It's um, a horse and carriage into Richmond Park, and they have to get the mason of the park to put the cattle grid and cover it so that the horse can get past. And the horses have uniforms, and it's all a bit crazy, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Some people get classic cars, but... This is really them Central Park in New York vibes here. <laughs> you've, so lost, yes, you've, lost fucking, you've lost a fucking run of yourself, Nima. <laughs> he's lost it, yeah. I think he's lost it. I think he needs to go and have a sleep. Are you going to go to bed? Are you going to turn up in bed like that tonight? That'll be hilarious if you oh, do. Hey, Nima's going out to the uh, underground house party right now. The, the, yeah, like, he's he's out, mate, if he goes out like looking like this, it, where are you? He's like, where are you about, say, you in London? Near, I'm actually it's quite it's quite a nice area. I'm just opposite from Craven Cottage on the other side of the river. Oh yeah, of course you are. You're down there, aren't you? Yeah, you've yes, been quite down there. They got, yes, I was gutted that they got knocked out before I could watch a Premier League yeah. game. But I'm gonna get a Wimbledon AFC season ticket because they've just built in Plough Lane. Yeah. So you, you wouldn't be quite so surfing. You wouldn't be quite so surf down the old Kent Road, perhaps. Oh no, um, for sure. But it's that like no. a monopoly <laughs> coming out <there. laughs> No, but seriously, guys, I think we're done. I think we're going to have to get out of here now. Yeah. Um, I think all we will say is that, look, please um, do hit that subscribe button. Do hit the bell for the content. The content's coming. We'll keep posting on Twitter what's coming up. We're planning on looking through all the players or, or the key players. We're going to start with fixture difficulty. There's no point doing anything else other than fixtures at the moment because we don't know where the players are going to be even. Totally agree. Yeah. So that's where we're going next. Fix your difficulty. So we will uh, probably this time next week, I think, we'll start with a fix your difficulty. Uh, and we'll not quite sure who's going to be joining me, but we will start it. Uh, I think we can all be on if we like. That's fine. Um, and we'll just run through the fix your difficulty and then we'll slowly but surely ramp up towards the season, going through key targets, players, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and yeah. That's that. So, <laughs> you're hot there. Are you hot there, Demon? No, no. I just want to give one last look of the haircut. 
There it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the other thing we wanted to that say. Was that was what the Pikachu started on. I wasn't yeah. even meant to. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to see that. So, so yes. So, in closing, gentlemen, thank you very much. Two hours and thirty minutes. Five oh, by this one yet. of thirty minutes. <laughs> longest one yet. Sorry. Longest so one yet. Yeah. We, we should get out of here before it hits two thirty, though. We do. We need to get out before it's two thirty. We are net that hole. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. I'm FPL Mariner at FPL Mariner. Gabe at FPL Lens. Hibbo at Hibbo underscore F FPL. And Nima at FPL Nima on Twitter. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. And pick us up on pods. Walking the dog. Sitting on the toilet. Wherever you are. Whatever you're doing. Wherever you pick your team. Pick us up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch you soon. All the very best, guys. See you real soon. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.